It's the Yeti Bassmaster Elite in Lake St. Clair, being brought to you live by Carhartt. Here we go at the halfway point of the season. So great to be with you this morning on Bassmaster Live. And this is the wrap up of our uh, big northern swing here. We're going to Lake St. Clair after two smashing tournaments in the state of New York. And we are ready to go with our full field on day number one of four days of fishing. Lake St. Clair has provided us with so many thrills, so many great moments, so many fantastic fishing days to enjoy through the years. Tommy Sanders here with Davey Hyde, former winner here with the Bassmaster Tour, uh, which is what it was called back then. That was the first Bassmaster event I ever covered, Davey. Oh, you, wow. were, you were magnificent, man. Oh, wow. So how magnificent are these guys going to be? Well, it's going to be great. You mentioned the last two events up in the state of New York, absolutely phenomenal. If I could pick one place to go that might be comparable to those two events, it would be here at Lake St. Clair. A lot of tournaments here in the, in the past years, and it always uh, shows up with, with big fish summer fall it doesn't matter it's going to be a great event all right you see our rules of the game right there four days of fishing about eight hours a day five fish limit for each and every day our full field of 85 anglers will fish today and tomorrow days one and two will cut it down to 40 for fishing on saturday day three and only 10 We'll get a shot at the trophy on the final day, Championship Sunday. We hope you can stay with us for as much of that time, and we've got a lot of coverage for you. About 24 hours worth of coverage coming up on all the platforms here. There's the size limit we're working with here, small mouth and large mouth, both 14 inches they have to be to go in that live well and be part of a legal limit. And as we mentioned, a limit of four fish. This is Dave Mercer. He'll be on the water and at the site there. Metro Park in uh, Macomb County, just north and east of Detroit. Here's a few scenes from the takeoff. That was about 30 minutes ago, I guess, Davey. Yep. And uh, these guys all have to motor out. They have to, you know, kind of do a circuitous little canal to get out to the to the lake proper. But they, there they got a lot of lake to work with, although not as much as in years past. It's going to be interesting. Uh, in the past, you could fish U.S. and Canadian waters, but only the U.S. waters. Obviously, a lot going on with the pandemic. And it'll be interesting to see. How, a lot of these guys just through the years tend to fish the Canadian area. Uh, uh, Chad Pipkins, one that we're going to have a camera with today. It'll be interesting to see him explore the U.S. side. Let's take a look at our hummingbird lay of the lake there and right between. You see Lake Huron and Lake Erie. There it is. Lake St. Clair and it's about 450 square miles. About the same size as Lake Champlain, but a completely different shape. This is just a big shallow bowl. Maybe. Absolutely. The big key there you mentioned, Tommy, is the shallow bowl. It's, it's a very large lake, over 400 miles. Uh, and even with just U.S. waters, there's a lot of room to move around. We'll see a little bit of the Detroit River. The St. Clair River could certainly come into play. But it being so shallow with uh, the St. Clair River feeding through there a lot of current in this lake, and we're going to be talking about that. That's going to be a key to a lot of these guys trying to catch a smallmouth bass. Every new bass fishing visitor to St. Clair is always shocked by the the speed and the persistence of the current there. You see Lake Huron. You, the American side of Lake Huron is in play. How much of that you want to bite off? I don't know at this time. <laughs> maybe not. Maybe not too many hours worth of running to get out there. But that's certainly, and of course, uh, as you say, the St. Clair River coming into there, we saw some great fish catching there last year. Yeah, it, it always, uh, we always have a few anglers that, that spend a lot of their time in the St. Clair River. Typically a little later in the year, you see those fish, they tend to migrate in that St. Clair River uh, as the fall approaches. But I think we'll still see a few uh, in the St. Clair River, but most of the anglers out on Lake St. Clair. Well, in our northern swing, we spent so much time with this guy for good reason. Here is Seth Fighter, definitely. One of the pre-tournament favorites won the three-day Angler of the Year season finale last year. Seth, day one, Cena last year's victory. Give us the breakdown. Yeah, uh, a little different here this year. A lot less water to fish, more boats. Um, this place has really been getting hammered this year, so fishing's a bit tough, but it's St. Clair. There's literally probably a million four plus pound smallmouth in this lake. And uh, we're see if we can get five of them today. Been a tough practice for me. Um, don't got no sneaky spot full of four and five pounders this year. Just kind of going to get out in the metro crowd and bob around with everybody else and see if we can catch a few. Every, so, every place I caught a bass last year was in Canada. Yeah, so I was going to mention most of the areas mm -hmm. that we saw Seth fishing last year was over in the Canadian waters. Not very far over, but uh, 
A hundred right. yards is too far. Well, you yeah, can't, that's they right. can't even they can't even drive through, let alone fish in Canadian waters. Right. They have the, something called the Quarantine Act in Canada, which is uh, certainly uh, put the same limits on our terminal in St. Lawrence and, and Lake Ontario as well. So that's just uh, that's the playing field for today. Let's get out to Stetson Blaylock, finished second last year. Well, we're just getting kicked off here, good. And, you know, I kind of, I always, I never start right on my waypoints, but I want to kind of expand a little bit right off the bat and just see if there's any fish kind of out away from them just to touch. But I only had one bite and it was a walleye so far. But that, that's not a surprise. I feel like today's going to have to just one here, one there, one here, one there to get what we need. So we got a lot of work to do to, to make it happen, that's for sure. So talking with Stetson last night, he is one of the one of the anglers that says I'm fishing for five bass. You know, I'm not going to do well catching two two and a half pounders, probably not even three pounders. I'm willing to take that risk at this point in my career to fish for five of the right size, throwing a crankbait most of the time. Again, Stetson finishing yeah. second here with about a 23 pound average last year. It's Chad Pipkins. It's crazy this lake how many fish and how much they move because we're in an area where I know the second day I could have caught 25, 26 pounds. I caught three, five pounders real quick and they were everywhere. And then I came back yesterday and they really weren't here. <laughs> I know they're still around the area. We just got to kind of relocate them. So we're going to try to hunt them up with a crankbait and then uh, if we start seeing them, we'll start dragging around. There's a couple stretches where I'll just drag a drop shot through and their mood's different every day. So maybe they're just sitting on the bottom waiting for something to slide by. So we're going to keep them honest, but this place should get better with this wind. They were piled in here when we had that south wind. And I think it pushed them in off this flat. And I'm hoping they come back to this little section. Yep. Make it a little easier for us to find them. But looking forward to a fun day with some good fish catches, I hope. That's the plan, anyhow. We're going to get after them. Another walleye there for Stetson yeah, Blaylock. Well, a lot of guys at home would love to have oh, that. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could make plans for your weekend <laughs> after Friday night fish fry anyway. <laughs> Absolutely. If you follow the Elite Series pros on social media, you saw a bunch of those in practice. Bunch of fish fries, yeah. They, they caught a bunch of walleye. Had Anybody catch dinners. a muskie? A couple guys. Did yeah. they? Yeah. yeah. A couple guys caught sturgeon too, some giant sturgeon as well. Really? So the last event I fished there at Lake St. Clair, uh, the second day when I had my fifth fish on line, thinking, oh, I got, I got my limit, a muskie bit it off oh, close to the boat. No. First time I've ever had that happen. I've had them chase and follow, but but it actually got it off my line. Was that 2015? Bit it off my line. 2015? Yes, 2015. That, was, that was the last time I covered one on the water as well there, and it, yeah, I have saw numerous anglers do that. You just see their rod jump mid-fight, mid and you're like, what was that? And they're like, ah, it's gone now, yeah. or it's in half. Here's Michigander Garrett Paquette, one of the anglers we'll be with all day long today. About as close as you've got to a home lake advantage. Okay. Yeah. First of all, good morning, everybody, from beautiful Lake St. Clair. It is 7.08, wind's already blowing. Having a little bit of trouble with Garrett there. Did mention the wind is blowing. When, when the wind blows on St. Clair, like most of the places we've been the last two events, uh, it's, it's, it certainly changes the look of the place and, and makes you work a little harder. It makes it more difficult on you physically, but the, the fish usually bite well with the sun out and the wind blowing. Here's Jamie Hartman, New York native, had a good New York swing. Well, kicking off the first morning here, Lake St. Clair. We are out here doing some deep cranking. Uh, wind is definitely different than it has been in practice, so we got a south wind. We'll see how that affects things. And I just drew a fish up with my crankbait. I wished I seen them before I... So there was one that followed right there, but he was already below the boat. But man, this is just the deal. You plug away with that crankbait till they don't want to eat it no more, then 
you pick up a couple baits like a drop shot or something a little bit slower and see I can I can catch a few here and there so it ain't gonna be fast and furious in this boat we're gonna plug them one at a time see if we can uh, get the big ones <laughs> fired up I caught a few big ones here in practice so this was by far my biggest fish spot right here so not saying they're gonna be here today but we're gonna try it's just a lot of randomness you take a look around man there's no contour out here except for a shipping channel and other than that it ain't nothing but sand and sand grass a little bit of rock mixed in here and there Smallmouth loves to roam, so. Let's take a look at uh, this season so far. Jamie uh, finished good high 25th here uh, last year, but what a season he has had so far. 14th place finish at St. John's River. That is a good, solid start to your year. It, it certainly is. and. You, you understand that a New Yorker would do well in those last two events in New York, but St. John's River and Lake Eufaula, ninth place at Lake Eufaula, 74 pounds, seven ounces. I was out on the water, covered him. He he, he really caught him well. It's disappointing to catch that many and not, not win, but Buddy Gross showed out that final day. But Jamie Hartman has had a, a great season and certainly surviving those two Southern tournaments, so to speak. Oh, yeah. Coming up on the New York swing. Uh, wouldn't be surprised to not see him fishing again this Sunday. Well, he's got a lot of momentum. Third place, uh, the last outing for the Bassmaster Elite Series at Lake Champlain. Good, good, solid week for Jamie Hartman. And, uh, he certainly had some opportunities okay. to, to surge out and, and take over that tournament. Just never could quite get it to pulled away from the rest of the field. Right, exactly right. But he's a solid tournament there. And Tommy, I'm, I'm sure you remember just a few years ago, he was in the battle for, for Rookie of the Year. We saw sure. something special in Jamie Hartman. But, but I see him different on the water now than just a few years ago. He's got a lot of confidence and he fishes for those bigger fish. The only way in in five fish it's a different mentality to have that that winning mentality so to speak catching five fish not worrying about just catching a limit of bass absolutely boy god really knows how to plan his day out and you see the results of this great season he's had so far a six point lead in 2020 bass master angler of the year standings uh, six points ahead of buddy gross our winner at Eufaula and last year's champion Scott Canterbury. you talk about a stalking horse Caesar right out there right behind those two guys and uh, looking to blow this thing open at any moment it could happen here could happen later on as our season has sort of been turned around we're having the end what was going to be the end of our season yeah, now fun bite if they start biting it in you late summer a bunch of water you can catch some big fish doing it too it's a way it's a great way to cover water out here try to find some locate them but i'll tell you what you can fish over fish too because when they don't want to eat it man they don't touch it or you can come through with a different bait and you can you can catch them on something else but you just got to figure these figure the mood out on these fish man this small mouth are, can be very finicky at times so we know that but here they get a lot of pressure so you got to try to trick them buzz this crankbait by their head pretty quick make them react to it that's what I try to do get it hung in that grass down there and crack it out and I just hope they bite sooner than later just to calm my nerves a little bit Well, right now would be sooner. We're getting an early start for Bassmaster <laughs> Live this time around, earlier than we usually go. You see the sun just, just up over the horizon. Good there now. A lot of these anglers you'll see throwing oh, a crankbait, especially early in the morning, around. looking for that bigger bite. Down in practice. Caught two giants, five and a half, and one that was right at five. Let's see, there's grass. That was Derek Hudden, all we just heard from there. Derek. That's when they're supposed to bite it right there.
Got five anglers with fish. Brock Mosley with the biggest, a four-pounder. All right. Spent a lot of time with Brock Mosley on this northern swing, for sure. His baby luck's probably still, you know, you still. get on the tail end of it. It's a couple <laughs> weeks out, but, but having a baby oftentimes improves your luck in the Bassmaster Elite Series. We've learned that. Tried and true. That's why I'm going with fighter this week. Yeah. Well, and he won here last year. Fighter's got the freshest baby. We know that. So <laughs> I, I like how he announced it, too, on, on Facebook. He wrote his new personal best human at 8 pounds, 12 ounces. Wow. I thought that was really fun. Oh, Jamie Hartman's hooked up. Oh, oh, oh. he was. Came off. A lot of walleye here too, so you don't know what they are until you get a good look at them. Blake like checking his live wells, making sure he's all good. He, caught, he just caught a small keeper registered on bass track we were, while we were going around the horn. Have to be 14 inches here for largemouth and smallmouth this week. When we were in New York, smallmouth and largemouth only had to be 12 inches. This week, 14 for Michigan. These guys, I mean, it's just so telling to see. Uh, Stetson just laid a, a crankbait down. All four of our anglers there that we have on camera right now throwing crankbaits. Looking, they're not looking for those 14-inch fish. A lot of places we go, fishing can be difficult, and just to catch that keeper a little over the minimum size is what you're looking for to try to survive or, you know, feel your limit. But you know, when you go to Lake St. Clair, that you're going to need bigger fish than just that 14-inch minimum. Yeah. Got a feature we love here, B&W Trailer Hitches. Live on the line, we're going to do that right now with our friend Gerald Swindle out there. Gerald, just getting going today. Tell us tell us what the outlook is. Let's take your temperature on this first day of competition. Well, we, uh, Tommy, we really just got out. Uh, we've been fishing about 15 minutes. I caught one about three or three and a quarter, and I, I ran kind of back in Anchor Bay area a little bit. It's a little drain. I, I call it a drain. It's just a, a big bay, and it's like the – probably the deep, little deepest part of it. It's about 10 foot deep out here. I'm throwing like a little DT6, a brown back, chartreuse sides, crankbait. I'm just kind of burning it over the top of 10 to 11 foot of water. And there were some fish in here, a lot of bait blown back in here. I thought it would be a good area to come start and get a few bites to try to settle down. Because when you get out on that big water and start that drifting, you know, it's so random out there and there's not much to do, you know, and, and having attention deficit disorder as bad as I do, when I get out there, it's going to be bad. So I thought, come in here and try to catch a few, then ease out there, drift around, and try to catch a couple more big ones. But I think I think we're going to have a pretty good tournament, Tommy. I don't think they're grouped up as good as what you guys got to see last year, but I think the big ones are still in here, and they're going to bite. It's just going to be random. So, Gerald, uh, starting out shallower than some of the other anglers, you tend to do that a lot. I fished around you a lot of years. Uh, I, I did the same thing a lot. Tell us a little bit about what you're looking for when you're in that 10 foot, you know, even five and six foot throwing a DT6. Well, David, what I'm looking for, a lot of this area has bait in it and, and short, what I call short grass. And then occasionally out in front of me, there'll be clumps of, say, eight foot by eight foot wide, six foot tall cabbage. But around out in here, just be clear bottom. So what the fish are doing, they get out around that grass, feed in those open areas when the bait blows around it. When the sun gets out, they'll get around those clumps. What you're trying to do is just run over this stuff in the morning with a crankbait and try to pick them off instead of having to slow down and throw at it. But you know, these smallmouth are bad about feeding early like this in these shallow areas. So I think to me, it's a great way to come in, kind of get settled down, crank over it, but a lot of bait in here. Really, that's the only thing different than this 10 foot of water in most places I've been. The bait just seems to be staying in here. Gerald, let's talk about what condition these fish are in right now. Of course, they're just, unlike a lot of parts of the country, they're just, they're just now uh, a few weeks after the spawn and they haven't really packed up yet and started feeding up for the fall yet. So it's kind of it's, it's a tricky deal to figure out what they want, right? It is, Tom. And if you've ever seen the movie Bad News Bears, that, that's the condition these fish are in right now. They're beat down, depressed, tired. 
don't have much of a chance. The lakes took a lot of pressure with the Canadian side being off limits. Most of the tournament anglers, you know, are staying over here doing their business. There's been a lot of events up here and a lot of pressure. So they just haven't had a chance to school up after the spawn. And when they do get in groups, they get beat down pretty bad. So I, I, I would say the fish are getting educated. They, I hear people say, well, smallmouth aren't that smart. Well, I'm not either. But if you hit me with a newspaper long enough, I'm going to come off. <laughs> you beat me at the face with a newspaper long enough, I'm going to quit biting. And that's kind of what's happened. They've just slowed down a lot, you know. They're still there, but they're getting educated fast. Gerald, I don't have the numbers to back this up, but but maybe maybe you can. I we talk about getting a lot of pressure here on St. Clair. I think lakes all over the country have gotten a lot more pressure over the last six months. People have just been out more. They've been buying more board boats and doing more fishing. Is, is that your impression as well? I that's what I'm seeing. Even the gunners were around Chickamauga, the areas I live in down in that the northern Alabama. I'm seeing more and more people at the lake. More and more people are buying uh, better equipment. They're getting more time to fish. You get more educated on it. And, you know, COVID's just taking effect. When you got more time to fish, you get more pressure. COVID has affected fishing in my knees. My knees mostly because I can't never remember my mask and I have to go up back to the truck 20 <laughs> times a day. But that's what I think. COVID has affected the fishing and my knees. I, I'm, I'm with you on that. Well, Gerald, thank you so much for letting us have a little bit of your time. Your first stop this morning. We'll watch you for a little bit. All right. We're just going to throw around, see if we can get another bite or two. Good deal. Crap out Gerald does really well uh, fishing that 10, 5 to 10 foot depth range uh, in, in all these smallmouth waters. Clark Winlet, uh, there's certain anglers that they really look for that depth range and uh, when they when it's on they can, can certainly do well. Don't tend to be out there in that 18 to 20 like you see a lot of these other anglers. Randy Sullivan, first angler with two fish on the board, is taking the lead. Seven pounds. How about that? One thing we noticed with Swindle, no matter where he's at, but he's always got a lot of rods on his deck. He's got a lot of different baits, a lot of different lures, and people are like, oh, he's a junk fisherman. He's got everything, every possible lure tied on uh, technique-wise, but I've been able to watch him, especially when he won Angler of the Year in 2016, that Swindle has a lot of lures on, but that doesn't mean he's switching and changing every cast. There are specific moments where he's got this tied on. Okay, I'm just going to throw this now because the fish showed me this aspect or this angle, and... And so he's prepared, maybe not classified as, I don't know what I'm doing, I've got a bunch of things on, but rather he's prepared for anything that could possibly happen that moment. Yeah, as anglers, you, you say, well, when you see only two or three rods on each side of the front deck, that guy, he's on them. But, yeah, he's but there in. might be 20 rigged in the rod box. Uh, these guys, you know, it's a big injury fee. A lot of them are a long way from home. They want to have everything, every option that, that they could possibly think of, they want to have it ready available. And, and for Swindle, he might throw a crankbait 97% of his casts, but those other baits will come in for a few key casts that, that could help you in the tournament. All right, well, let's take it out on the water and welcome in our colleague. He is on site this week in his home state of Michigan, Mark Zona. What are you seeing today, Z? Tommy, I'm not going to lie, I grabbed the low-hanging fruit and started with Brandon Polinick <laughs> winning our last tournament on Lake Champlain. Um, and here's the great thing, and all of all of you that, that have been to Lake St. Clair, uh, it's a massive body of water. And it, it was not depressing that Brandon started about a mile out from our takeoff this morning. And, and here's, here's one of the dynamics to look for uh, this week. We're going to do a lot of running around. But I've, I've already heard, you know, that the U.S. side, how much pressure it, it's received really since, gosh, I mean, I was here, you know, throughout April and May. But what's amazing is it, it's been on fire. The, the U.S. side of Lake St. Clair um, has withstood all the pressure, uh, you know, the local pressure. And you got a lot of folks that come from out of state. But one interesting dynamic to watch and and you remember back a few years ago, if you look over my shoulder, you're looking at Anchor Bay, and traditionally, you do not see a lot of pressure in Anchor Bay. Uh, the fish tend to scatter out a, a lot more, but if you remember back a few years ago, Chris Lane almost won out of Anchor Bay, and I could see clusters of boats in little areas, and really, a lot of the local tournaments have been dominated, really dominated the last three weeks in that bay. So we're going to spend a lot of time there this morning. So, so Z, do you think uh, 
there's just a larger population of fish in Anchor Bay now, or do you think because the anglers are only able to fish the U.S. side, they're exploring <laughs> Anchor Bay and places like that more than ever? I think every time that that folks come to Lake St. Clair, whether it's a tournament or not a tournament, you get lured to that Canadian side. The grass is always greener on the other side. And I think Anchor Bay traditionally, um, it just gets ignored. Uh, the, the other side about Anchor Bay, it's not one of the, those usual crazy number spots that you go through 30, 40, 50 a day. You might go through a dozen, but the quality is always, it always tends to be there this time of year. It's just, can you do five of those big ones a day? But Davey, I will tell you one thing, and I've looked at the weather today, tomorrow, going into the weekend, they are, ab do, take all the pressure aside, they're going to wreck them today. It is as perfect as it could get on Lake St. Clair. If you look at the conditions, there is not a cloud in the sky, a perfect smallmouth chop. And one thing I, I noticed listening to, to some of your coverage already and watching a lot of the guys that are fishing, you, you notice a lot of guys winding, cranking like we saw, you know, when we, we were here last year, is this is the time of year that that goes down. Like the biggest ones you can catch, you can catch cranking out on these deeper flats. It's if you can execute. The guy that can execute doing that is gonna be very powerful. The other thing to watch for the rest of the weekend, as pressured as these fish have been, usually we see a lot of guys dropping over the side with a drop shot, a lot of finesse stuff. I notice just idling around, Davey, these fish do not want you on top of them. I could side image fish right now, but when I put the trolling motor down and I'm watching Polinick as he's plinking, he's lost one good one so far, they're very boat weary. You could tell that in the first hour out here, right when you mark one, if you turn around to try to get back over him with your transducer, it ain't happening. You're gonna see, I think, a lot more guys off of their fish making little plink casts with their, with their front transducers. Z, good stuff. Thank you so much. Uh, glad you're able to run into the number one momentum man in the field here. Off, coming off that big win at Lake Champlain. Let's take a look at Brandon Polinick, former Bassmaster Angler of the Year, now four-time winner with the Bassmaster Elite Series, and he went on an incredible run. A, fl a flurry that was so memorable, Dave. It really was, and when it's your your day, it's your day. Brandon yeah. Polinick has been you know, he's won on Bassmaster Elite Series before, as you mentioned, but this was his day to have a phenomenal uh, final day on, on the Bassmaster Elite Series Lake Champlain. Other fishermen caught him, but when you do what Brandon Polnick did in about a 45 minute span there on the, on the championship day, you deserve to hold that blue trophy over your head. He was able to do what no one else had done up to that point. They were three pounds separating the top 10 when they started that Sunday, that championship Sunday. Brandon Polnick, uh, certainly broke away from the field there at Champlain. Back out on the water with Seth Fighter. Stetson Blaylock on the right, Fighter yep. on the left, and he's hooked up. It's been a slow start for me this morning. I didn't expect it to be wild. Fighter with another walleye. Mm -hmm. We got some new viewers tuning in. They're gonna say, why are they releasing those walleye? <laughs> yeah. kind of iffy. Why, or they're saying, oh, I didn't know it was a walleye term. <laughs> I want to keep them good. He looks tasty. He did look tasty. Interesting what Zona was saying. Those fish don't want, guys going vertical may not, may not do that as well as you might think today, started. huh? Fish don't want a boat on. Yeah, top they get of. they get weary uh, from the pressure. Um, it's interesting that like I've heard it from several of the anglers that I talked to last night, and then Zona saying the same thing this morning that he'd already noticed it. Um, but the electronics have come a long way. You got the the 360 mega imaging that you can see out away from the boat. You can see the guys with the uh, pan optics and that sort mm -hmm. of thing. They they can see those fish away from the boat. So if you don't have that on your boat, you're you're kind of at a disadvantage nowadays. That's a world we live in now, I yes. guess. Especially fishing at this level, you better 
Yeah, that's why you see so many of these anglers uh, with four graphs on their boat. They've, it's not just 2D sonar, not just down imaging. They've got side imaging, the 360 imaging. Uh, you, you really need to have all those tools if you're going to come play with the best in the world. You can see uh, they're represented all the eight anglers we're going to be with full time today. Plus, we'll have plenty of bonus coverage as Maybe we do with pounds. Carol Swindle. Here at Paquette again. Yeah, they're not. The one I just caught and then this one, I can already tell they're not in a feeding mode on this spot. There's a lot of current coming down from this channel and this current runs from the north and goes to the south and we have a south wind right, right now blowing against the current and that's like the last thing you want. It just, it makes these fish act real funky. They don't want to feed like they should so you get a lot of fish hooked on the outside of the mouth and on the back and the belly. And I've, I've tried a couple different presentations so far they seem to want this little spin bait here you know i mean that's just that's smallmouth candy and everywhere on the great lakes or in shallow water for smallmouth but it's it's one thing to hook them it's another thing to land them and we'll uh you know we'll give this a l couple more minutes and i'll probably get on my way unless it really turns on Odd to hear someone hook up on a St. Clair with a spinning rod not yeah, here. That, that's pool, some, something is not uh, <laughs> something's not right. You know they're not big or they're hooked. That one was yep. maybe 12 inches. It probably need a keeper. But it's not a not a great sign. Got a new leader, Cody Holland's got a five pounder among his total of seven and a half pounds. Five pounders, those are the kind you're certainly looking for. It's a gold standard out there this week. It will be for sure and always is here. Hey, it's always been a smallmouth only thing. It, you can't, it's not like St. Lawrence where you can catch largemouth and do really well or Champlain where you need a mix of them. It's always been smallmouth here, but we did hear of guys catching giant largemouth last year during practice. And I wonder if some of these guys a five pounder this week you don't know with the water they might have gone up and caught a large it'll be interesting to see at the weigh-in with dave mercer later mm -hmm. um if any green ones get weighed in and help even we, if it's not five we one, saw brandon lester catch some good small mouth in the river last yeah. year yeah, yeah. And small and mouth and yeah. large mouth and large yeah. Yeah. i'm sorry large yeah. mouth yeah large mouth he's catching both though yeah. Yeah. had a big one in practice he said he pulled from the middle leg said we're both lost yeah <laughs> so it'll be hey. interesting to see if like one bonus large mouth four five pounder will like you know help so the the first year that I know of the Bassmaster Tournament Trail going there was about mid-90s. And largemouth were players in. The smallmouth oh. weren't as big. The gobies weren't there. Um, and they had had high water for a number of years, a lot of largemouth habitat. Now with the high water, it'll be interesting to see in the next few years if the largemouth become a player. That might have been the, the Kim Stricker event. Is that what you're talking yeah, about? First the one, yeah, yes. first one. Brock Mosley back in the lead. Well, we're, uh, we're making history right here today with our fifth event of the season for the Bassmaster Elite Series and Brock Mosley, who always seems to do very, very well up north, now taking the top spot early on on the first day of coverage, and we'll be with you all day leading up to uh, 2 o'clock Eastern time. We'll take a break and be right back. The Yeti Bassmaster Elite at Lake St. Clair is being brought to you live by Carhartt. What do a taco and a taco truck have in common? Nothing. If you want to play, you need a Tacoma. Your time on the water is precious. You return season after season to make unforgettable memories. Fight a few fish, reconnect with friends, and recenter yourself. If you count on having this time, you need an outboard you can count on to power it. That's why boaters stay with Yamaha for the long run, for life. They know reliability starts here. 
The season is starting, and it's time for you to bring it. Pit your knowledge against friends and fans everywhere in Rapala Bassmaster Fantasy Fishing. It's free, and it starts by signing up. Then pick your five angler team for each event. Grand prize winner gets a Bass Pro Shop shopping spree, cash, and Rapala prize pack, plus new opportunities including $4,000 worth of prizes for each individual event winner, plus another $500 if you're a Bass member. Total value for the season is $90,000. Sign up today and start bringing it at BassmasterFantasy.com. Groundbreaking designs, unsurpassed quality, and unshakable confidence. Welcome to the Ranger Z500 and Z100 series. Leading the industry for over 50 years, these rigs are custom crafted and loaded with more features and advantages to deliver the ultimate ownership experience. The legendary Ranger Z series, unleash next level performance. Mercury, go boldly. It's been said that a bad day of fishing is better than a good day at work. Getting you to that fishing spot is key. And Bully Dog gets your truck road ready. No matter where, we give you the horsepower and towing torque right when you need it. We make getting there better. Make your ride a Bully Dog. for work or for fun, I always like to have a reliable generator around. This open frame inverter from Champion is ideal because it's lighter than a standard open frame generator and more affordable than a traditional inverter. The remote start helps me start up the generator or shut it off without having to leave my camper. It provides essential power for things like charging my boat batteries, also makes life a lot more comfortable for myself and my family. Born in Japan, Sunline has over a 40-year history of making the best fishing lines. With 10% of the company's employees focusing on research and development, Sunline is driven to offer the widest selection of bass fishing lines in the U.S. market. Sunline's fluorocarbon, nylon, and braided lines are made to the strictest Japanese tolerances, incorporating exclusive patented technology like Plasma Rise. Sunline provides the strength to guarantee your confidence. Pre-collision system, standard, on the 2020 Tacoma, so you can go from one epic playground to the next. If you want to play, you need the Tacoma. The Yeti Bassmaster Elite at Lake St. Clair is brought to you by Power Pole, Skeeter Boats, Yamaha, and by Toyota. Well, like all the events in our northern swing, a lot of anticipation for this one here, the final, the third event. Up north here, we've had two in New York. Now we're on legendary Lake St. Clair for the 2020 Yeti Bassmaster Elite. Cody Holland of Oregon should have some good smallmouth experience coming from out there. Guys like Jay Yellis can tell, tell you about that. Brock Mosley, Randy Sullivan. And there's Jay Yellis in the leaderboard himself right there. So we got, we got Oregon well represented, uh, for at least for the time being. 
But right now, let's get back out on the water. And of course, uh, the fellow who was our, probably our pre-tournament favorite, last. Seth Fighter. Oh, look at that. Nice small man. Saw him catch a walleye just before break. Definitely not a walleye here. Mm -mm. Hit me right in the eyeball with my bait. Gosh, it's such a unique fishery. It's, you know, this entire lake is pretty much 14 to, small you know, 18, 19 foot deep. God, unless you get the river channel all the way through it. And there's just, there's grass. Not bad. Really, from front to back of this place. Not big, but not bad. I'll take them. And it's, you know, you make. It's been a grind. You can literally drift pounds. this place for hours and hours. Well, he's going to turn the pumps on. One thing you notice, see that fish jump away from the boat? He's making casts, not board. dropping right under the boat. Ah, it just, just kind of falls Feels in good. with what the, you were talking about earlier there. And Seth Fighter with a good, solid keeper well, in the boat right there. Boy, what a career he's had with the Bassmaster Elite Series. Started back at, about three, four years ago. Qualified for the end of the year Angler of the Year Championship on uh, Lake Malax, or Malac as some of the natives call it up there, and he put on a show, Davey Knight. Absolutely. Seth Fighter is uh, no stranger to a lot of those people in the north a few years ago. He's a great fisherman, especially around Lake Minnetonka and Lake Malac, that sort of thing. But uh, in the last few years, he has shown that not only can he catch these beautiful smallmouth, uh, like last year in the Angler Year Championship, Seth Fire catches them down south. He catches them all over the country. A great fisherman, well-rounded fisherman. Loves to have a flipping stick with a jig in his hand, fishing vegetation just as much as you see a spinning rod there with a drop shot. He's even given some, some largemouth thrills up on this northern swing as well. So he, he's been delivering. He's been delivering on the promise this year. He has, and uh, I would have loved, that was a three-day event, the Angler of the Year Championship in 2019. Would have loved for that to have been a four-day event because he would have been well over 100 pounds. He told me, I guarantee I would have hit 100 pounds. I'm sure they'd be all out there. It's kind of a friend of the school. Fish put Seth uh, up in the top 10. At least four now. With the three and a quarter pounds. You know, we, we've got bass track, and some of those guys don't have time that they're by themselves to put things in. I'd just be surprised if we don't have uh, have somebody. Oh, yeah. That's some outliers. This here. Yeah. And, and that'll come through as the day progresses, but. Yeah, we didn't. No marshals this, this go around just because of uh, health and safety concerns. It is mandated though for, for guys that they, they need to and, and almost have to put it in because yep. it's now, if you're going to ask half the field to do it or some guys have cameramen putting them in, everybody needs to take that 30 seconds, which is great when you're drifting around at the St. Lawrence River or wherever and you need to idle back up, it takes 14 seconds yep. to do it and, and your fans and your family at home are thankful to have yeah, that. I think all the anglers are doing that, but it, just sure. like when I yeah. send you a text, sometimes oh, it might yeah. be 10 or 15 sure. minutes before oh, yeah. you get it. It's definitely delayed, especially yeah. when you're, if you are flirting with that shipping channel border area. It's a good many out there on that spot. And as predicted, these guys said there's going to be a lot of flotillas of anglers at certain places here just because of the compressed uh, legal fishing area that we have this time around back out there at Hudnall. We've been so spoiled fishing these great lakes that, oh, man, yeah. you got a boat that's a quarter mile from you. He's he's crowding me out, yeah, guys. Stay, get out of here. <laughs> Derek's hooked up. Second year man from Louisiana. Little. Little. Large mouth. <laughs> How about that? My first large mouth in the morning. But I hate to do this. But 
and I'm gonna have to put him in the box. So we talked about the 14 inch minimum size length, but you can tell he's not excited about having to put a 14 and a half inch large mouth in a live well, because those fish are not gonna be the ones that, that you need to take to Dave Mercer this afternoon. He caught his personal best this week, a 681 smallmouth. Wow. Six pound 13, six pound 14 wow. ounce large, uh, smallmouth on St. Clair. Postpone, probably yeah. only a month yeah, yeah, yeah. or maybe two ago, but that's a monster fish this time of year. Compared to a 614 one month from now. That's what I was explaining yes. on Facebook Live is, Davey, one month from now in the south, fish aren't too much different than where they're at now or maybe from July to August, they're not that much different. Up north, they're facing winter pretty, yes. pretty close after that October time period. So from late August to late September, it's a totally different uh, yes. experience. They, they have just a, a shorter window to, to feed and, and to replenish their body before it, the water temperature gets so cold and they go dormant. That was about the big fish last year. Fighter had a 612 here. That was the one big fish. A couple of those. He probably caught four or five six pounders. But yeah, 612, uh, getting close to a seven for smallmouth is incredible. I mean, you mentioned Garrett Paquette being, uh, you know, other than Chad Pipkins, you know, probably one of the ones with most uh, fishing experience and considered a local here. Talking to him last night, it surprised me. He said, I do not fish there as much as most people think. Hmm? He said, I love to fish there pre-spawn when those fish get on boulders and individual targets, but, but throughout the summer, those fish roam so much. And he said, I... Years ago, I was studied and I researched and I saw some people that were great anglers that fished Lake St. Clair a lot and, and did not seem to do so well when they fished tournament trails and went down south. Um, so he said, I have intentionally stayed away from that lake this time of year because the fish just roam and, and they're so hard to predict and, and you get caught up in just looking for uh, rogue fish that are roaming around. Very mm -hmm. interesting. Very interesting talking to him about that. Well, he's got a bone to pick with this body water. Last year, he was right on that classic cut and finished 48th here and was the first guy out of making the classic. Some bass. Fighter hooked up again. We'll take him now. Oh, boy. Two. Not big, but like I said, I ain't gonna take any bite for granted today. Two and a halfer. He felt big when I first leaned into him. Then I had one of the magnums. There again, you see the expectations of these anglers. A two and a half pounder, they're just not real excited about it. No, no. Certainly put it in a live well. Yeah. <laughs> he didn't chug it back. But probably a good idea. Just, no, you've got to uh, have, your average size has to be bigger than that. We've got some guys moving up on the leaderboard. Randy Pearson, Dale Hightower, Harvey Horn, third place. Jay Yellis, second. If you catch one, you better drop one right there. We'll go from Seth Fighter yeah, now out to Mark to Zona, who, uh, Z, I understand that you are with Clark Winland. Be our first look at him for today. What do you see? Uh, here's what I can tell you, Tommy Sanders. Clark Wendland has absolutely crushed them this morning. And what's interesting is, as I heard you guys just talk about, that there's a blatant disregard for a two-pounder. Well, Clark Wendland right now, there's a blatant disregard for a three and a half pounder. Wow. He has absolutely crushed the three and a half. Like literally, we, when we did that last hit, I, I, I was looking out, and if you've been to Lake St. Clair, you see boats all over. 
but I was looking and staring at one boat that there was a lot of movement in that boat right there. I said, let's let's kind of creep over there. And we got to Clark and I said, what, what do you have right now? And he caught about a, I, I'd say a three and a half pounder, unhooked it, let it go. I, I don't even know that it helped him. He said he has not weighed his fish yet. But this area that we're in right here, to, to kind of, if you've never been to Lake St. Clair, it's just like a barren desert out here in this general area of the lake. We're not very far from takeoff. We don't want to give exacts right now, but there's little clusters of hard spots, little tufts of, of standing grass that only come about a foot off the bottom. But the one great thing about this area, a lot of tournaments go out right there. And those fish basically come out of that channel or they come out of another channel just north of there and funnel back towards that flat where that big pack of boats is south of here. And interesting, Clark said, I cannot believe nobody has found this spot. He's virtually alone. There's about another boat about a mile south and one about a mile north, but uh, he has creamed them. But you could tell he wants to get to that all four pound level. He said he's not weighed them, uh, but he's got a good, good stringer for the first hour of fishing. So, so Z, um, the area that he's in, uh, why, why not any more fishermen than that right in there? I mean, you, you know that area as good as anyone. Does, does it just not have the vegetation it normally has or what's going on? It's very, very, very featureless this year, baby. I will tell you one thing, looking at Clark right here, if you pan over to him, what, he, he's basically looking at his front facing transducer and picking out, picking off individual fish. Right before we went live, he literally caught one underneath my propeller, literally underneath my propeller. Um, it, it, it's just, it, it does not have a lot of grass, but the one thing that I have seen on, on my transducers, there's a lot of bait here, whether it's little three inch shad or emerald shiners, there is more bait in this five acre, basically crop circle, than there is north of here or we've seen south already this morning. Z, great job, man. You may have uh, sniffed out our tournament leader there for us. We couldn't ask you for anything more than that. Wonderful stuff from Mark Zona on the water. Of course, Z has put his hours in on this lake. He's, he's like you, he has had success here before. He certainly has, and he knows where to look. And uh, I knew Clark Winland would be someone to keep our eyes on. He's had a phenomenal year so far. Um, and Certainly expected him to have another good tournament here. Back out to our four box with Hartman and now back to fighter. Look at this. Rick and Wes found us. <laughs> Live on every angle. Wes and his stupid drone. <laughs> we love that drone. See? Live drone. Look Why at that. Why wouldn't we love that? So there's a little inside joke, I, I guess, that uh, Wes is bad luck and uh, around <laughs> fighter, so that's why he's so disappointed at <laughs> Wes. Hey, we will give Wes some credit. He was in the boat when, when fighter. I don't know if it mattered who was in the boat last year. Fighter was catching him so well. Yeah. Real luxury to have live drone coverage, but we've got it this week, and we are going to enjoy it. I guarantee you, you're going to see some incredible images. And you do see about three or four boats, five, yeah. six uh, there within a half mile of one another, the total area. That is a little unusual for Lake St. Clair. Only being able to fish U.S. waters. Uh, narrows it down to only, what, probably 250 square miles? So, yeah, that's just... I mean, just they're a, on top of one another. Just a thimble full of water, basically, <laughs> compared to regular years. No, they got a lot. But, but most of the guys said, hey, you're going to see flotillas of anglers. Yeah all out in those those key spots well all, we've already, all week long yeah and we've already talked about it. the electronics have come so far through the years that these guys with only two and a half days of practice they they narrow 250 square miles down uh in a big big way that side imaging down imaging 360 imaging all that stuff you know it's, it, i was wanting to ask the whole time we, we only had a brief time with mark zona that i mean how does Obviously, that's how Clark Winlet found these, yes. this, this special little spot that he's obviously on right now. And I, how do you find that in a place that vast? Well, in, in 1994, the first time, and Clark and I were rooming together then, the first time we were there, you just put the trail motor down and fished. Uh, our electronics were so limited, flashers. I mean, when you got right over top of the fish, you, you could see some. And then you had all that vegetation mixed in. It could be hard. Uh, those fish could be hard to find. But now, 
a lot of these guys will never put a bait in the water until they have graphed and graphed and looked with their side imaging that, uh, and, and they see bait or they see fish. So you can just, you can eliminate water so much quicker than you could years ago with the, with the advancement in electronics. And that's, I mean, that's, that's the key to fishing. I mean, just to, to put yourself around some fish because so many times back before the electronics were so good, you could literally be fishing. And I thought about this 20 years ago. Uh, is there a bass within a half mile of me? Yeah. And now, you wouldn't know. honestly, so many of these anglers will not put a bait in the water unless they physically can see bass on their electronics. So, you know, you've eliminated a lot of the problem. At least you're around them. Then it's figuring out how to get those fish to bite and trigger, you know, reaction strikes a lot of times. We've seen some guys in the, over the years that have waited until they see fish on their graph to drop, and they're about two hours into their day, and they hadn't dropped Get their restless. bait yet. Yeah, yeah, and so it's it's one of those things. Going fishing sometimes helps as well, but yeah, when you're or when you at least have practiced for a few days, that first day of practice, some guys go a couple hours, and they're like. I need to just go catch yeah. one somewhere and then go look around some more. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, you get restless. <laughs> Maybe there's something wrong with my transducer this morning. There's yeah, gotta exactly. be fish here, yeah. even though I'm not showing any. Exactly, is this on demo mode? <laughs> yeah. Mm. <laughs> See Seth Fighter in the bottom right right there. Though. Notice him making those casts, making those pitches. Uh, five years ago, we'd see guys dropping vertical and that's all you'd see him do, but these fish have gotten weary of the boat. Seth Fighter. Among the 85 full field out there today, we still got Cody Holland on top, but we know some info. We have some intel on Clark Winlet that might upset that leaderboard a little bit when Clark gets a chance to enter those uh, those numbers and, and when signal allows him to get it back to the uh, tournament officials we'll see where he really stands and we'll be uh, standing by with a few messages for you and be right back the yeti bassmaster elite at lake st Clair is being brought to you live by carhartt What do a taco and a taco truck have in common? Nothing. If you want to play, you need a Tacoma. Groundbreaking designs, unsurpassed quality, and unshakable confidence. Welcome to the Ranger Z500 and Z100 series. Leading the industry for over 50 years, these rigs are custom crafted and loaded with more features and advantages to deliver the ultimate ownership experience. The legendary Ranger Z series, unleash next level performance. Mercury, go boldly. of your Skeeter boat, win a Skeeter approved contingency paying event, and you could add $5,000 to your winnings. Just enter, fish, and win. It's that easy. Rules and conditions apply. Visit SkeeterBoats.com and click the Real Money logo to register and learn more, or visit your local Skeeter dealer. Fish, win, get paid up to $5,000. Go to SkeeterBoats.com and see why now is the best time to enter, fish, and win with Skeeter Real Money.
This reel allows you to cover more water, make more casts, giving you more opportunities to catch more fish. The new Revo Rocket, Abu Garcia for life. <laughs> Born in Japan, Sunline has over a 40-year history of making the best fishing lines. With 10% of the company's employees focusing on research and development, Sunline is driven to offer the widest selection of bass fishing lines in the U.S. market. Sunline's fluorocarbon, nylon, and braided lines are made to the strictest Japanese tolerances, incorporating exclusive patented technology like plasma rise. Sunline provides the strength to guarantee your confidence. I'm pro anger Andy Montgomery. I've been making my living with Strike King products for a long time. So when they showed me the new Tour Grade line, I was all in. I knew I could trust it. What I didn't know was how easy it was to use. With the spooling tool and the prepaid envelope to recycle your old line included in every single box. Not only is it the best line on the market, it gives you the easiest fishing experience possible. Find out more at StrikeKing.com. At Mercury, we invested thousands of hours of engineering manpower so you can enjoy hours and hours of untapped horsepower. Introducing the all-new V6 Mercury Pro XS. Light, quick, efficient. Mercury, go boldly. At Mercury, there are no limits to what we'll do to make sure you have no limits either. Introducing the all-new V8 Mercury Pro XS. Light, quick, efficient. Mercury, go boldly. You don't know their names yet, but you will. When I'm on the road for work or for fun, I always like to have a reliable generator around. This open frame inverter from Champion is ideal because it's lighter than a standard open frame generator and more affordable than a traditional inverter. The remote start helps me start up the generator or shut it off without having to leave my camper. It provides essential power for things like charging my boat batteries, also makes life a lot more comfortable for myself and my family. Your time on the water is precious. You return season after season to make unforgettable memories, fight a few fish, reconnect with friends, and recenter yourself. If you count on having this time, you need an outboard you can count on to power it. That's why boaters stay with Yamaha for the long run, for life. They know reliability starts here. Pre-collision system, standard, on the 2020 Tacoma, so you can go from one epic playground to the next. If you want to play, you need the Tacoma. You're watching the Yeti Bassmaster Elite at Lake St. Clair, being brought to you live by Carhartt.
Great to have you with us this morning. Bassmaster Live, a full dose of it today and for the next four days. This 2020 Yeti Bassmaster Elite at Lake St. Clair. Vast Lake St. Clair. Getting close to 500 square miles of water. You're not acres, but square miles of water out here. In fact, they've got a little more water than usual. We'll get Such to fill us in on that. A little bit later on, you can see how these boats are grouped up. Though they're not being able to fish the Canadian side this time because of the uh, quarantine act in effect uh, in the uh, neighboring country to the north. And let's get right down to the to the water. I mean, right on Seth Fighter's boat. And I believe we got him hooked up live. Yes, sir. There it is. Seth Fighter out. Pitching a drop shot around. Uh, not throwing a crankbait as much as we saw him throw last year, but get some fish in live wells. Said he didn't have the practice that he was hoping for because most of the fish last year he caught were in the Canadian waters. But there's lots of big smallmouth in the U.S. waters we're going to see today. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There's a better one. Great shot there. Well, he wasn't coming off. Little VMC Nico just Pegs on man. Looks like a soft plastic jerk bait. Seth drop shot in there, and he Can mentioned to me last VMC. night that's the number four VMC Nico hook, uh, weedless hook there on that drop shot. Nice one. So that's two that we've seen that he, uh, the size range that, that we're looking for, to three and a half, four pounds at least. Mm -hmm. You need that size to. That, those are good be. tone setters for yes. day one. You want to be in it and 20 pounds will keep you in it. Let's go from Seth Fighter, not too far away actually. We pick up Illinois' Chris Grow. First visit with Chris this year. See Chris with a drop shot. He told me he's starting out in the mornings first thing, throwing a crankbait, but once the sun starts getting up, uh, more light penetrating, then he has not been able to catch any fish on a crankbait. Some of the other anglers said, hey, I'm gonna keep it in my hands all day long, uh, covering water with the crankbait, but Chris saying that I'll be using soft plastics once that sun gets up, and he's hooked up here. Brat. You know this, Davey. If your boat flipping them on a spinning rod, you you don't have to say they're a baby. We we no. know yeah. the small amount. You're gonna go and grab them if they're if they're you know the quality you want. There again, it's a 14 inch minimum, and that fish was over 14 inches. It's a legal fish to keep, but he knows that you don't want to take those to the scales because uh, <laughs> you won't be uh, you won't be among the leaders if you take yeah. those 14 and a half inches to the scales. You catch a hundred of them today, and you're still only gonna have about 12 pounds, and that's not gonna cut it. Here's our Angler of the Year leader, Jamie Hartman. Solidified that lead with a good finish. Third place at Champlain. I think this year, different than, well, obviously 2020 is way different than any other year that we've ever experienced on this earth probably, but in bass fishing, this is gonna be the most unique Angler of the Year battle because we're doing our best to fulfill the full season. Having those four events in the fall down south, normally this, is, this was our scheduled final event of the yeah, this year. Was our this was the final finale. event of the year, yeah. and it's the fifth of the season, so having four more after this, those guys who are good at smallmouth that have really racked up points the last three events are going to now have to let that field maybe catch back up to them, 
in those final four events, and we'll get to see it go down at Fork to see who decides the Angler of the Year title. If, yeah, Fighter told me, he said, I'm going to get as many points as I can up here because South in the fall can be difficult. He says, I could be top 10 or 75th. Yeah, it's an uh, interesting point you brought up, Ronnie, because, you know, Jamie Hartman, we, we talked earlier this morning that he had two good tournaments down South and then the two good tournaments in New York, which you expected him to. Typically, if you see a Seth Fighter or Jamie Hartman this time of the year in contention for angle of the year, look out, buddy. But now you're going to see some guys that maybe don't normally have that momentum late in the year that since we're going down south for those final events, uh, you better keep an eye on. Even like a guy like John Cruz, top 10 in angler of the year. Here's a little bonus coverage for you from our drone shot, our live drone. This is Brett Pruitt. Looks like he's got a good one, oh, too. That's, that's a great that's, picture there. That is, that oh is a man. nice one. That is. His heart's, his heart's racing a little bit. Absolutely. Just don't get your britches wet by that boat rocks. So obviously we're not allowed to use dip mat. It makes it much, much Ooh. more interesting. Makes the heart rate go up a few man. notches there. Gotta, it's good fish for Brett Wrangling. Brett Pruitt. Different sort the of view right there. Master Elite at Lake St. Clair is being brought to you live by Carhartt. I'm pro anger Andy Montgomery. I've been making my living with Strike King products for a long time. So when they showed me the new tour grade line, I was all in. I knew I could trust it. What I didn't know was how easy it was to use. With the spooling tool and the prepaid envelope to recycle your old line included in every single box. Not only is it the best line on the market, it gives you the easiest fishing experience possible. Find out more at StrikeKing.com. If you love bass fishing, then show your support by joining BASS today. With your membership, you'll receive every issue of Bassmaster Magazine, plus $50 in free gear, including a membership tackle bag, BASS cap, plus more. Click now on this video to join today. You don't know their names yet, but you will. Japan, Sunline has over a 40-year history of making the best fishing lines. With 10% of the company's employees focusing on research and development, Sunline is driven to offer the widest selection of bass fishing lines in the U.S. market. Sunline's fluorocarbon, nylon, and braided lines are made to the strictest Japanese tolerances, incorporating exclusive patented technology like plasma rise. Sunline provides the strength to guarantee your confidence. yet but you will at mercury we invested thousands of hours of engineering manpower so you can enjoy hours and hours of untapped horsepower introducing the all-new v6 mercury pro xs light quick efficient mercury go boldly at mercury there are no limits to what we'll do to make sure you have no limits either Introducing the all-new V8 Mercury Pro XS. Light, quick, efficient. Mercury, go boldly.
fish and win with Skeeter Real Money. Fish out of your Skeeter boat, win a Skeeter approved contingency paying event, and you could add $5,000 to your winnings. Just enter, fish, and win. It's that easy. Rules and conditions apply. Visit SkeeterBoats.com and click the Real Money logo to register and learn more or visit your local Skeeter dealer. Fish, win, get paid up to $5,000. Go to SkeeterBoats.com and see why now is the best time to enter, fish, and win with Skeeter Real Money. This reel allows you to cover more water, make more casts, giving you more opportunities to catch more fish. The new Revo Rocket, Abu Garcia for life. You're watching the Yeti Bassmaster Elite at Lake St. Clair, being brought to you live by Carhartt. So glad to be bringing you some live bass fishing today. It's Bassmaster Live and coverage of day one of four days of fishing at the Yeti Bassmaster Elite at St. Clair. We have a new leader, it's Texan, Clark Wendland. I got his fish reported in as Mark Zona Kind of sniff that story out for us and got right on and got right over to Clark and told us uh, what well, actually was going down out there in his special spot. We'll to visit more with that place a little bit later. That angler for sure, Cody Holland of Oregon. In fact, two Oregonians in our top four, Jay Ellis and Cody Holland. That's kind of unusual. Uh, in between them are Kansas and Harvey Horn. Clint Davis of Alabama round out our top five. Of course, that'll change a whole lot. We got the full field fishing today and tomorrow. Full field is 85 anglers on this week, the fifth week, the fifth event of this year for the Bassmaster Elite Series. Very much a changed schedule. And we are happy to get as many of them in as we have been able to. And we are looking to get them all in before this season is done. And just getting five of them a day. But at some point, you got to get a bite to kind of get you going, and I've not been able to do that yet. See Stetson going back to the crankbait there. It's so interesting. Earlier with the four box, we saw four, four guys with crankbaits in their hands, and when we first went to that four box, uh, all four had spinning rods you know using soft plastic. And what I need to do. And what I feel like I can do. That was a fish too, swatted at it. Didn't feel like a big one either, but definitely one swatted at it. We've got a different wind direction too than, than every other day, so your drifts that you've been making from west to east or west to southeast are now basically totally opposite of that. So you've got to kind of try to get through your areas the, the best way you can and, and hit your key points. One unique thing about this place is usually if you make a bunch of drifts and catch several, your, your waypoints will line up the opposite direction. So if you make four or five drifts one way and have waypoints in a row, that's usually how it works here, which is kind of what I'm doing right now. 
trying to just go from waypoint to waypoint, but I'm, I'm totally convinced this week that those fish are not on little spots like that. They're just roaming out here in these key areas. And you just gotta make the right pass, which can be tough. when there's not that many of them in little groups trying to litter. He's got some Blaylock laying it out for us pretty good right there, and uh, drifting is not a finesse thing. Either. They have strong current 24-7. Yeah, they, they do, no doubt about it, but the wind direction, uh, not only for the drift, the change in your your waypoints, the way where you've had bites uh, or, or marked fish, uh, not only that, but that the speed of that current can definitely be affected by a south wind like they have there today, which you've, we've heard several anglers say they have not had that in practice. So uh, it affects the, the angle of your drift, but it definitely affects the speed of that current. One day in practice, there was a image uh, an angler took and said the direction of the wind today, and it was all the arrows going different places because <laughs> it's a bowl. And as that storm or system rotates, they're like, dude, it was just blowing from the east, now it's blowing from the west, and now it's blowing from the north. And so but, it, but it definitely is a washing machine effect out there. It is, but that, that doesn't affect the current as much yeah, as, as you get a direct, steady south yeah. or a steady north. Uh, yeah, I think I would rather have it, uh, if, rather than a steady south, have it change in those directions yep. with those, those little storms. But. A couple guys experiencing seasickness, which is not the best condition you got to take medicine for it or you got to put those patches on different things to, to keep you balanced because it it is an ocean out there st Clair's. little surprise michigan's chad pipkins was espousing the uh drama main or do you have his sea legs yeah that's a little surprising as much as he fishes either. there there we go not a walleye not a smallmouth either mm -mm. There's a lot of guys to be heard from yet, but Ray Hanselman Jr. with a couple four-pounders. He's in our top ten now, fifth. Yes, he's just barely hooked. One, one thing that's interesting about, we're seeing a bunch of walleye. Last year's event, we saw a lot of fish catches, but hardly any walleye, or we saw a lot more smallmouth than walleye. I noticed that on another Northern Lake Mille Lacs, I went three or four weeks later than I did the previous year, and every waypoint that I caught smallmouth on, all I caught was wall walleye the next trip. How they do migrate differently just in a few weeks span. Yeah. One smallmouth hold becomes a walleye spot, vice versa, just depending. Those walleye really focus on bait, especially if areas that have a lot of perch in them. Mm. Take it out to another Michigan angler, Chad Pipkins. Still looking for his first keeper. That's going to be a little bit perplexing for Chad surprising. right now. He will catch him before the day's over, though. I totally, totally think that Chad will be in the, in the thick of things all four days. Well, you mentioned yellow perch, Davey, and I did a little trivia later with smallmouth. But yellow perch is the number one pursued fish on St. Clair. Wow. 750,000 are caught each year. Wow. Chad Pipkins hooked up. Not the one we were looking for, but we'll take him right now. He's got a couple friends down there. At least she's a little more cooperative. Come here, fish. Ain't that big. Oh, sorry. Damn it. I need to throw another bait out there quick. Where's my pliers? saw other fish with that one that he just caught and 
here, Mitchie and I need to get another bait out there really quick. Get out there, Betsy. Definitely saw a couple others down there. You got a mess for moving, huh? There we go. There we go. Get everything. We'll get everything dialed in here before lunch. <laughs> Yeah, that was the hard one, right? That's what he said. Excuse me, sir. Chad Pipkin's first fish in the boat. That's good. It's kind of a <laughs> shakedown uh, situation there. <laughs> Not too far away from Chad. Northern angler, Seth Fighter of Minnesota. He's fighting one right now. It's a bass. Can't tell how big he is yet. Not all tournament anglers, though. I see some of those boats. They're perch fishermen, walleye oh, yeah. fishermen. Go on, dude. What do we need for sure? Wow. Nice fish for Seth Fighter right there. Yeah. Oh, man. Yes, sir. That's number two. three. Number four. There's I two. Believe. Number, number four, the third, the third, third solid. Real good one. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Look how long that thing is. Wow. That gives you a good idea of we're just dealing with a different animal because of the time of year. Those, that's a, obviously a postponed bass there that just has not yes, recovered. Sir. Be another build up. another pound, pound and a half, maybe in another month or so. Yeah, a few thousand day. gobies later. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna catch four pounders. I mean, why not? Why not? There you go, four for thirteen. You're right there, bud. You psychic or something? You've been playing them tarot cards, haven't you? Two more big beauties, we'll be all right. Don't hurt my feelings, one of the five pounder, two of them. So that was a three and a half. That would have been a four and a half. Yeah, absolutely. In, that in fish two months, super so long. Uh, yeah. But everybody's going to deal with that. You, overall weight will just be a little lower because these fish are just not as, as fat as, as they have been in the past. All right. Well, we mentioned him just moments ago, one of our two Oregonians. Doing very well today. Jay Yellison, we're with him right now. A little bonus coverage for you. It looks like Jay is hooked up again. Or is, no, no, yeah. Yeah, yep. Boy. That looks like a good fish. There you go. There you go. That's a little bigger one than the last one. Jay Yellis, when we saw the uh, lay of the lake there, he's a little farther back in the bay than these other anglers yeah. we've seen. I thought maybe he'd be largemouth fishing, but he's not. That's no. a nice smallmouth there. Yeah. He's in second place. Wow. 15 pounds. Put him up there. Let's get back over to Jamie Hartman right now. He's definitely one of our favorites coming in here. He's hooked up live. Oh. 
First fish this morning. Very, very surprising. I don't know yet. It's got a pretty good head shake to him. giant absolute tank stay hooked up big girl stay hooked up That's the ones we're looking for. That's right a there. huge oh, fish. Gosh. Wow. Mm hmm. And that's when you get it to them, that's what they do, man. They eat it. Uh. <sighs> wow. That fish is. It's hard to guess because it's, it's lean also, but that's a that's a big fish. It is. Hit the bottom. Boop. I was like, yeah, I know that's a I know that's a bass. <laughs> I just gave him a second and laid the pipes to him, man. See dude, I know. I mean I know they're here. Yeah, look how long it took me to get one bite though. Five pounder? Yeah, I would say. I yeah. Would be six in a month? <laughs> yes. Beautiful fish. Hmm. Really impressive. Worth the wait. Yeah, First absolutely. fish of the day. Absolutely. Yep, yeah, he's got time to get four more bites like that. We'll be once again watching Jamie Hartman. Yes, for <laughs> like sure. Like we did the last few weeks. The few weeks on him every day. I was entered on Bass Track as a 4-0, four, oh, four pound flush. Wow. <laughs> that may be a tad low. Definitely didn't exaggerate the weight. I'll bust Jake Latondras out on that one because he was low on Polynix final day weight at Champlain, so I can bust out cameraman Jake for uh, being a little low there. <laughs> Well, Jamie's saying, I know they're down there. That's not good news for everyone else in this field. No, it's really your, not. Your angler of the year points leader is going to get a little bit better situated if that is, in fact, the case and if he can make them buy. Yeah, the number two uh, angler in the AOI points, Buddy Gross, has three fish that go four pounds, five ounces. Mm -hmm. Oh, three I missed total. them. Talking Ain't about that southern you know. swing, though, if Buddy Gross is... Within reach way. when we go south, look out. He's done a great job so far staying right there, you know, in second place. That's awesome with this, the third uh, northern swing tournament. Grab the back end. Might have been a walleye or something. With his second four pounder, Jay Yellis, He's up to 17 pounds in the lead. Wow. Probably. Surprising to see Destin DeMario not with any fish so far this yeah. morning. Talked to him last night. He had a good practice. Uh, felt good about it. Had 20-pound days in practice. Yeah. Pennsylvania, Great Lakes angle yeah. for sure. Destined to marry. Guides out on Lake Erie. I did not know that until I talked to him last night. I knew he was Old Pennsylvania angler. The house and still rock the flasher pretty hard. I guess whatever you're used to, you know.
You see Jamie Hartman with only one fish, but you see the size, the quality fish that he's looking for. He's out in the shipping channel, um, just an angler, just like I mentioned, talking to Stetson Blaylock. Uh, they're committed to fishing for those bigger fish and knowing they may only catch six, seven, eight fish in a day, but the five they take to the scales will be the right ones. I got to another angler we're spending time in the boat with today, and that's Baton Rouge, Louisiana. That was the first Derek clean Hudnall. cast of me. Hey. Small in the boat. Look, he just missed a fish there. There he is. Ain't big at all. Little. How about that? Came unhooked as he was up. swinging it in the boat. That is for sure. Why is that thing not holding? Oh, that's why. All right. Not much to report on yet, guys. Show you some more of our uh, live drone coverage we got for you. Lined up all over the lake today going to be everywhere with it. This is a view from above of Brandon Lester, who uh, we joined him last year at this time. He's most likely to be in the St. Clair River. Yes. Uh, where it braids out and goes into the into the lake there. But he's found him another spot today, obviously. Way, way more open water than normal for Brandon yeah. Lester. I, I didn't know if he thought he was only restricted to the river portion of the of the river of the lake. Surprised we're not seeing him because I think Last year he was saying I, I can narrow things down and yeah. see these current breaks and oh, yeah. know exactly what I'm fishing in this river more so than out on that lake. He must not have had luck. I think he said his plan was to hit both. He had, okay. He had some spots in the lake and then in, and it'll also hit the river. Kobe Krieger in our top ten, a little more than 14 pounds. It's always interesting some of the backstories when you see the guys like like wow. Guy like Kobe Krieger doing well up north. You know, he's from Florida, blah, blah, blah. He is no, from he's, Indiana, yeah. and then he just lives in Florida, but he has a lot of strong roots up north and things like that. A so. lot of time on Lake St. Clair, <laughs> yeah. no doubt. I wonder if he's going to pull out the old school drift sock like he did last, <laughs> yeah. last time on Champlain. <laughs> You know, I've still got like three or four of those drift socks up in my, you know, storage <laughs> in my boat shed thinking one day we might need them again, but we'll never need those no, things again. I, th I think technology has yes. made... Uh, Slide rules out yeah. of the out of the drift sock with yeah. the talons, the spot lock. The mm -hmm. you know it's just it's one of those things you might need them one day, Davey. Keep storing them up <laughs> up top in a compartment somewhere. And put it next to your canned food that you're yeah. hoarding yeah. for the future. <laughs> You've been in my boat yet? Well, before? yeah, just just a quick peek. I didn't <laughs> take anything. You'll be happy to know. <laughs> Boy, it's going to be interesting to watch these anglers. Chad Pipkins, Stetson Blaylock, they have both got a lot of time here. I didn't realize Stetson had fished St. Clair quite as much as he told me last night he has. Um, and for them to only have, you know, Chad Pipkins one fishing live well, Stetson two, uh, this wind direction change because really it's, it's a good wind speed for the fish to bite, uh, clear skies but the wind direction change has thrown a loop in these guys' plan, but they'll adjust. I would, I'd be shocked if we don't see both of these anglers with, you know, close to, if not above, 20 pound bags in a live well. Okay. Yeah, constantly shifting wind is uh, not everybody's cup of tea, obviously, no. out there today. It's something you got to learn to deal with, though, because you only got four days to get it done. And Some lakes, it affects much, much more than others. This, this shallow, big, flat lake with so much current flowing through it is a very different place than where we were last, uh, Lake Champlain, which is, you know, hundreds of feet deep. Uh, yeah. That, oh, that yeah. wind just kind of moves that surface 
water doesn't affect those deeper fish as much as it does here where most of these guys uh, like a Jamie Hartman could be out in the middle of the shipping channel and only be you know 20 feet deep. Yeah, the average depth here, believe it or not, at the lake this size is 11 feet. Yeah, that's uh, that amazing. Tells you, tells you a lot. This uh, place is a northern Lake Okeechobee to me. They're so similar in so many ways. Both um, shape similar and yeah. depth is similar. Both greatly affected by wind oh, speed and wind direction. I mean, you can have a place wiped out in in minutes on Lake Okeechobee, and you can have the have your fish leave here yes. is kind of what happens when you get wind on a bad spot. Chad Pipkins, who's only Bassmaster Wind, is the lone Bassmaster Wind. Was right here on Lake St. Clair, uh, an open. Back in 2014. Having a good year, though. He's eighth in Angler of the Year points, heading into starting this day. Yeah, and most people uh, expect him to maybe even move up in the Angler of the Year points after this Come event. On, big a lot mama. of experience here. Although most of his experience here, for, for whatever reason, he tends to fish the Canadian side, which we're not allowed to do this week. That and in past, past years when Erie was in play, he would run to Erie as well. That was a, a place that he trafficked a lot. Which is interesting. This is good. Three times we've been here since 2017, and with 2017, all three lakes were involved, Huron, St. Clair, and mm -hmm. Erie, all Canadian side and Michigan side. Then last year it was just St. Clair, part of the rivers, uh, the Detroit and the St. Clair, and then this year, that same deal, we added Huron, but only U.S. water. So it's, it's been a three different Playing fields, structures within the same fishery. Another thing that's very interesting, when, when we've had all uh, had Erie available if you wanted to make that run, St. Clair and, and the St. Clair River, how from year to year one one area will be much better than the others. Just in, just in one year's time is like, man, if you're not at Erie, you're not going to do well. And, and then the next year you come back and all the, the top guys are in Lake St. Clair or the river. It, it, it changes so much, even though we usually uh, fish within about a month uh, time span every single year uh, from mid-August to mid-September. Yeah. We had, we've had guys in the past just risking basically wiping out their equipment. The weather's so bad getting down the Detroit River yeah. into Lake Erie, yet they couldn't couldn't help themselves. They had to go. They right. want to win and, and a lot of them wound up on the sidelines, yes. you know, sitting yes. on the bank. Great shot with a drone there, you can see it moved far. Seth Fighter just put a really nice one in the boat there to put himself from outside the top 10 all the way up into seventh place. We have got a much anticipated tournament here and a lot of people tuning in specifically to watch this guy, Seth yeah. Fighter here because he made such an impressive, I mean, just uh, on a record setting tear last year in a tournament that was unfortunately just three days probably would have broken the century mark. He says it's not going to happen this year, but uh, we have seen some impressive things today. Oh, yeah. I think he's uh, a little ahead of schedule for a guy that caught him so good last year, uh, you know, catching four and even some five-pounders at wheel, back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back cast, but uh, he's doing well this morning. He was a little pessimistic for a Seth fighter. 
coming coming in here, to be well, honest with you. A lot you. of his pre-tournament comments were taken, obviously, after a bad practice day. Right. And <laughs> to the point where he was saying, look, I'm just going to grind it out, try to get a limit, maybe get a check here and just move on. Yeah. But I, I bet he's changed up his thinking. By he was like, he was a little positive at the end of our conversation last night. He said, hey, but I'm just going to go out there and have a good day and, you know, see if I can find him. Maybe, maybe I'll stumble on something I said. You didn't expect to catch like 27 pounds at the firecracker last year, first morning either. So just go fishing like you did last. He said, "Yeah, you're right." So again, Lake St. Clair is a. We're only fishing maybe a little more than a third of it due to uh, only the American side is open because of the uh, quarantine act in effect in Canada. Still, a lot of water to fish here. Oh yeah, and, that uh, drone gives you a, a good idea of. How big it is. And as Seth pointed out, early, early this morning, there's there's a million four pounders roaming around out there. This is not maybe the best, easiest time of the year to to round them up and put them in the boat, but we got the best in the business out there working today. His best line from last year on I think it was on the third day he was just catching fish. Five pounder cast after cast, no help. He turns to the camera after an empty cast, says, I didn't catch one on that cast. Final event of this much anticipated Northern Swing for the 2020 Bassmaster Elite Series. We are on legendary Lake St. Clair. We're just north and east of Detroit in Macomb County. And we have seen some incredible, incredible slug fests out here in years gone by. Right now, we take a look at our unofficial leaderboard right now, and it has Oregon's Jay Yellis, the former classic champ, on top with 17 pounds early on this first of four days of competition. Another veteran hot on his heels, Clark Wenlet of Texas. He himself has had great success here on this body of water. Tommy Sanders here with another man who has had great success on this body of water, Davey Hyde. And, and how has this morning played out so far vis-a-vis -vis the expectation? I, I hate to say this, but it seems a little slower than maybe we thought. But then you look, they've only been fishing a few hours. Jay Yellis with 17 pounds, Clark Wenlet with 16 pounds. And those are probably conservative estimates. Might have almost 18 or almost seven. Uh, but it's fishing a little more difficult than it did last year. It's just a little different time of year, but these are the best in the business. Even though they're limited just to U.S. waters, we will see 20 plus pound stringers of smallmouth bass weighed in. All right, from your lips, we will take that promise, Davey Height. And this is our hummingbird lay of the lake for you right there. In between Massive Lake Huron and Massive Lake Erie is Lake St. Clair itself, a huge lake, 450 square miles, but you can see the part, uh, the lighter colored part is the part that's available to our anglers here. The rest of it considered Canadian waters, uh, thus off limits in this year of 2020. They can also fish the St. Clair River. You can see at the top of your screen as it comes down from Lake Huron and even the American side of Lake Huron is available to anglers as well. That's a long run uh, to get up there. You, you, you better have something lined up and ready to go if you're going to make that long run to Lake Huron. So we got a lot of different things working each and every year. And uh, Davey, you've been fishing here for many, many years, but that's not unusual as we welcome you to uh, Bassmaster Live. Tommy Sanders, Davey Hyde here. You won back here in 2001, and every year since then, it seems there's something, not just a little bit, but significantly different each and every year. It really is. The vegetation changes. The, the lakes uh, seem to turn on, whether it's Lake St. Clair or Lake Huron. That's a lot of water. It's a little deceiving looking at the Hummingbird Lay of the Lake. Lake St. Clair, over 450 square miles, and then you have the river and Lake Huron. So a lot of water available, and these are the best in the business at figuring those bass out. All right. Well, we're going to be with you for a good long while today. In fact, all the way to the end of four days of fishing to Championship Sunday. Got a regular crew in place here, including including Mike Sukon, the Such. Mike, what are you looking for this time around? Oh, I'm looking at our leader, Jay Yells, what he has in common with you two guys. Guys, he's going in the Bass Fishing Hall of Fame this year. All right. Wow. Well, he's, uh, he's shoring that up. And at the screen of knowledge, of course, 
We looked to Ron Moore, the, the master of the screen. What do you got for us, Ron? Well, we wanted to break it down, Tommy. You said this fifth event of the Bassmaster Elite Series season. We're in Michigan, the one event that we will have in that great state. And we want to break down a couple of the key players that we should see. We have eight guys on camera all day. We'll have some bonus coverage with anglers as well. But here are some of the picks to win, some of ah. the guys that should factor this week from our own cast and crew. Two guys out on the water, Dave Mercer, Mark Zona, and then the four of us in studio. Our picks to win. We'll see three of these guys live all day on ESPN2 and Bassmaster and Jamie Hartman, Seth Fighter, Chad Pipkins. Those are the guys that we will see on camera today, but we've got a Paul Mueller, came so close to winning just a few events ago. A Chris Zaldane, done very well here in the past, and a Matt Heron, he has done well at St. Clair and on other smallmouth lakes. So here are some of the picks to win. Tune in, sit in, enjoy. St. Clair is going to be a treat this week. Smallmouth's always fantastic when we get to watch them. Thank you very much. Looking forward to all of that, Ronnie and Such. And of course, uh, Ronnie mentioned Dave Mercer and Mark Zona. They'll be in action out there on the water, bringing us the stories today. It was actually a Mark Zona that sniffed out a Clark Winlet for us this yeah. morning when he took the lead early. This is some of what we've seen so far this morning. And Seth Fighter, whose outlook was not good after a rough practice. Uh, you're doing a little better the next week. Oh, yeah. I just had maybe one tough day of practice and did so well here last year. You know, his expectations may be a, a little high. You know, you're not going to go even to a great lake like Lake St. Clair and catch 25 pounds of smallmouth every single day. So, Chris Grow, another angler, the Illinois angler, will be in the boat with him today. And there's our leader in Bassmaster, Angler of the Year points to start this tournament, Jamie Hartman. And man, did he get his first fish. <laughs> got it late, but boy, he got it good. Those are the fish that the guys are looking for. Can only weigh in five bass. And on Lake St. Clair, those five fish better be nice ones. You see a good one there from Seth Fighter. The anglers are not looking for two and three pounders. They're looking for those four plus pound smallmouth. Out on the water right now with another one of our anglers, Michigan angler. We're covering today Garrett Paquette, and he is hooked up. This is live. Saw Garrett earlier throwing a spin bait. He's got a spinning rod in his hand, but might be a drop shot now. Looks like he's a little farther offshore. Mentioned it earlier, didn't have drag pulling on those small, barely keeper fish. The drag's pulling here. It's a good sign for him. a better fish here and looks like he is using a drop shot not the spin bait like we saw him using earlier not a giant but that's two bites in the last 20 minutes maybe so i think we finally finally drifted our way into a couple so let, we're gonna milk this area and once you find them out here, I mean, it's just a matter of, of going through them. If you get 10 to 15 bites or land 10 to 15 fish, you should have 20 pounds. I mean, the quality on this lake is just phenomenal. We got a charter boat right here fishing. I don't know what they're fishing for, but it looks like musky. So musky and smallmouth like to eat the same thing. That's a good sign. Garrett, one of only a few anglers going to fish the lake and the river. Okay. The combination of the two. We'll be looking forward to that. We're going to take you out now to Stetson Blaylock. Stetson was one of our stars here at the end of last season, our big postseason AOI tournament, and finished second place, averaging over 23 we pounds. We haven't had even that many followers yet. Fish a day. There's a big one. I say he is, he don't feel that big at all. Can't hardly tell though, cranking. Nope, he's little. The world. Whoa. I don't understand that. I mean, I'm happy to catch keepers, but I'm supposed to be catching big ones out here. Another pound and a half. 
fourth fish for Blaylock. Unfortunately, that's the average size right there. Those four fish, he's got to step it up. A little and bit. when he says he doesn't understand that, it's where he's fishing, the baits he's using. Uh, he's targeting those bigger fish and was able to catch those bigger fish in practice. So surprising to see the, the size go down in the area that he's fishing. One of the best smallmouth anglers on the Elite Series rookie this year, Austin Felix. We saw him day one at Champlain. Yeah. He's over there not far from Brett Pruitt. So we saw an aerial of Brett Pruitt catching him. Austin Felix catch him as well. It's a good start for the Minnesota rookie on the Elite Series. Absolutely, about as big as Brett Pruitt's was. So that's uh, maybe he's found himself a good place to hang for the time being. Hang with us. We got a whole day live fishing for you here. Bass Master Elite Series. There's our leaderboard. Unofficial weights uh, via Bass Track. Jay Yellis, the veteran, former classic champ on top. Another esteemed veteran right on his tail. We got a lot more to come. We'll take a break and come right back. The Yeti Bass Master Elite at Lake St. Clair is being brought to you live by Carhartt. Sunline has over a 40-year history of making the best fishing lines. With 10% of the company's employees focusing on research and development, Sunline is driven to offer the widest selection of bass fishing lines in the U.S. market. Sunline's fluorocarbon, nylon, and braided lines are made to the strictest Japanese tolerances, incorporating exclusive patented technology like Plasma Rise. Sunline provides the strength to guarantee your confidence. At Mercury, we invested thousands of hours of engineering manpower so you can enjoy hours and hours of untapped horsepower. Introducing the all-new V6 Mercury Pro XS. Light, quick, efficient. Mercury, go boldly. At Mercury, there are no limits to what we'll do to make sure you have no limits either. Introducing the all-new V8 Mercury Pro XS. Light, quick, efficient. Mercury, go boldly. The Yeti Bassmaster Elite at Lake St. Clair is brought to you by Humminbird, Mercury, Minn Kota, and by Talon. Great to be able to bring you some great live bass fishing at the very highest level from one of America's great cities, Detroit, Michigan. We're up in Macomb County, a little north and east of uh, Detroit City proper. Going out of Metro Park here on fabulous, legendary Lake St. Clair. One of the legends of bass fishing is the man in the lead right now. In fact, he's going into the Hall of Fame this year. Jay Yellis of Oregon, unofficially the leader, about a pound advantage over Clark Wenlith and one of the legends of bass fishing. And Alabama's Clint Davis, former college standout who's made a good name for himself on the Bassmaster Elite Series. Over the last couple of years, the rules of the game, we're going to fish for four days, about eight hours a day. A five fish limit, that's all you can bring to the weigh-in at the end of the day. Full field of 85 anglers going to fish today and tomorrow. We'll cut it down to 40 anglers for Saturday for day number three, and only 10 will advance to the final day and have a shot at the championship, the heaviest four-day total. Your aggregate total over the four days of five fish limits. It, it'll take five fish a day every one of those days in order to do it. Get back out on the water. These are the anglers that we're with all day long, bringing you bonus coverage from several others as well, and back out to Stetson Blaylock. Stetson, 
We see Pick him. Up his yeah, go ahead, yep, David. Yep, we see him uh, with a spinner rod in his hand. He's been throwing a crankbait most of the morning. Here you see him picking the crankbait back up. A little disappointing the fish that he's caught so far on the crankbait have not been the size that he expected. Things should change for him though. I like what he's doing. There he is. Doesn't feel that big though. I mean, barely hooked. No way he's going to stay on there. Oh, I just, I think I got him better right then. Whew. Better fish there for him. Got my leg too. Not my leg leg, but my pants. That gets me on track a little bit better. Just a three three pounder though. Got to keep on keep on growing that. But at least it's a right direction now. Yeah. Really number one though. <laughs> he says really number one because of the three fish he already had in the live well. That's that's the much about twice the size of his average yeah. fish. Right Absolutely, there. and you, you mentioned the, during the rules of the game, five fish limit is so important to remember that these fish, these guys can only bring five fish to the scale. So when you, when you're catching his first two were you know pound and a half fish. You, you know that you're not going to have a chance to do well in this event if you bring those size fish in. So that, that fish you just caught, number three, but like he said, really number one because these are not the size that you want to take to the scales. This is all action from earlier this morning with Stetson Blaylock. Last year he was able to adapt just a little bit di to, again, different conditions last year. Had to move about a quarter mile further out into the lake from a very famous community hole yes. in order to make in order to find those fish they had moved out that far and, and did it did it very well I well, finally got a decent bite got four in the box but only one that I really need to weigh or can weigh and be where I need to be We're still early we got a long day And I've been doing this for four days, got my arm muscles, my crank muscles built up, so we're just going to stay with it. And... I think we'll have an opportunity at five, though, five of those like that. One just hit it right there. What's that? I'm just throwing the same one I was throwing last year. This is the Norman NXS. Got those super sticky Gamakatsu G Finesse trebles on there. Throwing it on 12 pound Seaguar in Vizex. And I'm throwing this on a, a 7 3 to 1 gear ratio reel. It's a H2O Express TAC 40. But I've got a bigger handle on it so I can really crank it. I mean, that bait's got to be moving. In my opinion, I can't get those big ones to react at all unless you're really winding it quick. This bait runs just about 20 feet deep, but I'm kind of watching it. If I'm around grass, I'll slow it down just a touch and hold the rod tip up. But right here, there's really not much out here. It's just kind of, I mean, it's all flat, but there's little stretches that don't have any grass down there and you can really wind it hard try to trigger those strikes. There's sand grass pretty much everywhere, which is just a little short, four, five, six inches tall. But then there's 
what I call cabbage mixed in with it in places. And I thought that you had to be around that stuff, but obviously you don't because I've caught fish really where there's been no grass. Stetson Blaylock deftly handling our AFCO taste the bait for us right there. Incomplete Stetson Blaylock picked up his first win with the Bassmaster Elite Series last year. Had a great swing through South Carolina when he fished, finished second place at Lake Hartwell and then came to here, Winyah Bay. Uh, Davey, very famous community hall here too, and he, he milked every inch up. Yeah, he, he definitely did. He did a great job there. To be honest with you, uh, I fished that area quite a bit. It amazed me that he was able to, on the fourth day, to, to still catch these quality fish. A, a small area that a lot of boats have been fishing. It just shows what a quality fisherman Stetson Blaylock is. He was patient and uh, was able to basically catch every fish that lived in that area. What was impressive there was his first time ever being to Winyah Bay. Brand new, fresh eyes. Said he didn't want to watch anything. He wasn't quite sure. He didn't really want to make that long, long run. And the strategy paid off staying close, fishing that area. There was a lot of anglers around him, but he obviously dominated Afterward, that one. Afterward, he said if he knew it was the big community hole it was, he wouldn't have fished there. <laughs> Chad Pipkins hooked up. This is live. Laylock on the right. If we land this one, we can slide into 73rd. I really expect I like big it. things out of Chad today. Me too. He was my pick to win. He put him up on the big monitor there, screen of knowledge. I'm hoping. <laughs> so that that's why he's had only one fish today. You well, you're the right one to pick, Chad. Right. Okay. Like I'm nice and tired. Come here, buddy. Come here, little feller. We didn't even break the two pound barrier. We will, we will, slow and surely. If you're at home, you're saying, and unsurely, probably, but it's gonna happen. All right, expecting big things from Chad Pipkins. Big things already happening for this angler right here. Jay Yellis, the veteran, the legend of bass fishing, former classic champion for the update on that. Mark Zona on the scene, Z, you are all over the place. Now you got our leader again. Uh, we got lucky again, Tommy, and here's the amazing thing. Davey, this one is for you for the simple fact that we've been on Jay Ellis now for 10 minutes and basically throwing a bladed jig on a sp and a spinner bait on 20-pound line in four to five feet of water, the old school way of Lake St. Clair before electronics and drop shots and all that stuff. Um, look at him. He said he's doing it for all the older guys. Um, <laughs> And, and here's here's the one thing that I've noticed so far today, being with Clark Wendland, being with Jay Ellis, doing two totally separate things. But from all the way back when I was here in April to now, the water is so incredibly high. Like if you go up in the in the rivers and the channels here, you see houses with sandbags, you know, you know, basically protecting erosion and protecting their their living room. Here's what I've noticed on the lake today. I have never in my lifetime seen so much current on this lake. Basically, we've got a southwest wind. This is a little TH Marine weather report. We got a southwest wind about five to 10 miles an hour. And as much as that wind comes across this lake, that current that comes through these channels, the north channel, the middle channel, the south channel, that current is heavier than I've ever seen it. And both of these anglers areas where they've caught these bigger stringers today right dead in that current. So, so Z, I've got to ask you, and appreciate the shout out, but you've seen Clark, he's showing unofficially in second place in Bass Track, Jay Yellis. Can Jay Yellis sustain four days in the area he's, he's in? Here's the interesting dynamic between your two unofficial leaders. There are no other boats around them. That party that's going on on the Metro flat, and don't get me wrong, uh, camera woman Ashley and I, we're gonna visit that party today at some time. Both of your unofficial leaders have virtually no company. But I, I can tell you one thing, 
the buzzards were starting to circle Clark when we were getting ready to leave. <laughs> Here's the thing, Clark. Clark's in an area where, uh, where, where he can really be seen by a lot of people. Jay Ellis, not so much. He is tucked away in one of those little hidey holes. Tommy. Oh, good stuff. Mark Zona, who has seen every scenario possible on Lake St. Clair, giving us the benefit of his many, many years of top-level experience out here. And with our leader Jay Yellis and with Clark Linlet when he was our leader. So we can't ask for any better coverage than that. We got looking forward to a lot more of that during the course of this day. Bassmaster Live coming up all the way to 2 p.m. as we get ready for weigh in time on day number one. We're going to take a quick break right now and we will be right back with you. The Yeti Bassmaster Elite at Lake St. Clair is being brought to you live by Carhartt. find a Toyota Tacoma. It's the best-selling compact pickup in America for 12 years. And it's not because we baby them. If you want to play, you need a Tacoma. It's been said that a bad day of fishing is better than a good day at work. Getting you to that fishing spot is key. And Bully Dog gets your truck road ready. No matter where, we give you the horsepower and towing torque right when you need it. We make getting there better. Make your ride a Bully Dog. Your time on the water is precious. You return season after season to make unforgettable memories. Fight a few fish, reconnect with friends, and recenter yourself. If you count on having this time, you need an outboard you can count on to power it. That's why boaters stay with Yamaha for the long run, for life. They know reliability starts here. You're watching the Yeti Bassmaster Elite at Lake St. Clair, being brought to you live by Carhartt. Great to have you with us on Bassmaster Live this morning. We're going to take you right through the remainder of this hour, right up until 10 o'clock Eastern Time. And we'll take our midday break. That's one hour that we take at uh, 10 o'clock, and we'll be back at 11 a.m. with the remainder of our coverage. Three hours worth of coverage, Bassmaster Live. Here on ESPN2. The app. Going out live now to Chad Pipkins, Michigan angler, also listed as one of the favorites. Ron Moore's pick to win the tournament. Kiss say that death. every time. What? Kiss of death. Doesn't look big, <laughs> but we'll take him. A little slower start than we expected. Three, three, three and a quarter, come on. Three and a half. No, he's just dropping down. He saw one on his graph. Bring him up to find out. Maybe a little better, a little better. Better than two. He's one of those guys that's so good with his electronics. Yeah, if you just just tuning in, you saw him. Uh, he yeah. spotted a fish below the boat on his graph and Come reeled on. in and dropped his bait straight down and Strong. hooked up this fish immediately. I didn't think he was that big. It looked like a. I might be right on. Hopefully, a little over three. 
Bring him in here, maybe. Maybe he's a strong two and a half. There's another one under the graph right now. No, oh, he's a little one again. Thank you for your patience, Mr. Fish. This is going to happen sometime today. So four two-pounders for Chad Pipkins. He knows that's not going to get. Chad Pipkins knows what's going to take to win this thing. So much experience here on Lake St. Clair. A good guy to go to for a breakdown of the lake. What's going on, guys? Chad Pipkins here. We're here at Lake St. Clair, my home lake. This lake is absolutely phenomenal, and you got a lot of things going on. It's like the, I call it the perfect storm. We've got gobies that came in maybe 10, 12 years ago. It's like protein shakes for people. I mean, these fish gained a pound, pound and a half. On top of that, the you know perch population's booming. We've got crawfish, we've got alewife, like everything to grow a you know trophy-sized smallmouth. It, that's here. Lake St. Clair is, is pretty flat in terms of most of the places we go. It's kind of featureless. If you, if you go out and you can pay attention to some of these details and look at your hummingbird lake master charts, it makes that big of a difference. I mean, that way, if you're coming from here out of town, it can be intimidating on where to start. This gives you places where to start. This is where I won my first tournament on my home lake, Bass Open 2014, made my first classic, and that was pretty special. So I hope we're gonna get, gonna get, it, get it done again. Chad Pipkin with our hummingbird lay of the lake right there, and a good one too from a guy who knows. And a guy who knows he's got to up his up his average size if he wants to be around for all four days of this one, and he would dearly love to. I would expect he expects to be around for four days. And he and this guy right here, Seth Fighter, who won our Angler of the Year Championship event here last year, catching well over 25 pounds a day, and he's hooked up right now. It's a tiny bass. Five, but he ain't much of nothing. Expectations are just so high here. Oh uh, yeah. You know, when you're catching two and a half pounders, you you're wasting time. It's it's sad to say, but that's exactly what yeah. these guys are thinking. His average fish last year here, 15 fish, five pounds, three ounces. Wow. Mm. Average three. Size average. Fish. Unbelievable. It's he's my smallest one. I mean, he had 26 pounds a day, 78 pounds for, for three days. I caught 78 pounds in three days, but that was at Lake Falcon and it was large mouth. <laughs> to do I've, that up north with small mouth is unbelievable. I think I've caught 78 pounds like in four years in Arkansas. I've lived here. <laughs> You're great <laughs> to do it here. Garrett Paquette hooked up. He told us. 15, 20 minutes ago, they're starting to get him dialed in that that wind current, wind current opposite direction thing, but that had him a little messed up. Like drum. If not, Chad Pipkins and then Garrett Pocket. I mean, these guys got a lot of experience here. And a little slower start this morning, I think, because of the change in the wind, like you mentioned, Tommy. But we'll see these guys catch him today, no doubt about it. He's worried this one might not be a species not he's that looking big. for. <laughs> Again, it's just another two pounder. Two, two and a half pounders. Not what they're looking for. Fourth fish for Garrett Hawkett. This is earlier today. 
Roger, as he said, not really happy about the current and, and the wind being in opposite directions. It's more like the size that Gary's looking for right here. Solid four pounder. This is the best one of the day. Made a different drift first cast. Bait didn't even hit the bottom. Hopefully it's a sign of things to come. Let's the starfish in his live well. Let's go to one of our stars, perennial stars. It's Dave Mercer out on the water as well. Dave, what have you got for us? What have you, what have you been observing? Oh, to be honest, I, I'm just thankful to be here, guys. Uh, th this is a segment we're going to call making you feel good about your Thursday morning. I mean, I went to back in my boat, and Davey knows. I mean, one of the coolest things about having a shallow water anchor on your boat is the fact that you can just back your boat down and just hit those talons, and it'll float off the trailer, and you can just coolly go and park your trailer and get back in your boat unless of course you're talking to someone while you're backing up and you hit the remote a little late and my boat ended up about 20 feet from the dock so I spent a little time you know wondering whether I should swim whether I tried to steal a kayak but that was frowned upon finally got some help from the folks from Metro Park thank them very much they brought their boat over I'm about to get in their boat listen to the idiot that I am I'm about to get in their boat and I dropped my car keys right in the water right in front of them. So they had to get another guy to help me. He magneted out my keys. But I'm here, and I'm thankful to be here. So hopefully my story makes some of you feel better about your morning. But guys, from what I'm seeing so far, man, it's amazing how grouped up a lot of these anglers are. I mean, we are literally within three miles of takeoff, and we've already seen 20 to 25 percent of our field. But th that's going to be the tail this year with the Canadian water being shut off, which I guesstimate is, is maybe 65 percent, 70 percent of the lake, and especially the fishable water this time of year. I mean, that Canadian structure over there on a featureless lake is very appealing, but the anglers won't be able to go there this time around. All right, Dave, thank you very much. You know, those things come in threes now. You had to, you missed on the poles, you missed, you dropped your keys. I don't know what the third thing is for Dave, but I hope it's, uh, I hope maybe they've got someone assigned to take care of them. Keep your the PFD on, Dave Mercer. <laughs> yeah, keep your yeah, personal flotation going there. Dave Mercer will be uh, digging up some stories out there on the water. Of course, he will be in charge of the weigh in, which uh, at the end of day one will. Uh, See who leads going into day number two. We'll take cut the field down to 40 after two days. We're going to cut away for a quick break right now, and we will rejoin you in a moment. The Yeti Bassmaster Elite at Lake St. Clair is being brought to you live by Carhartt. Skeeter boat, win a Skeeter approved contingency paying event, and you could add $5,000 to your winnings. Just enter, fish, and win. It's that easy. Rules and conditions apply. Visit SkeeterBoats.com and click the Real Money logo to register and learn more, or visit your local Skeeter dealer. Fish, win, get paid up to $5,000. Go to SkeeterBoats.com and see why now is the best time to enter, fish, and win with Skeeter Real Money. know their names yet but you will
You're watching the Yeti Bassmaster Elite at Lake St. Clair, being brought to you live by Carhartt. We are in the state of Michigan and fishing Michigan waters exclusively here on legendary Lake St. Clair Bassmaster Live Day 1. Of this uh, third tournament of our Northern Swing. That's the halfway point in our season. This is the fifth of nine regular season tournaments. Our TH Marine weather watch today. Beautiful weather, high of 82 degrees, a little 61. Sunny, it's a little bit of wind out there, a little chop on the water. South southwest wind, five to 10 miles an hour tomorrow. A bit warmer, and the wind uh, basically southwest, more southwesterly, five to 10, about the same speed. So the, our fishermen so far have been blessed with this TH Marine Weather Watch because that is perfect smallmouth fishing conditions there on Lake St. Clair. Want plenty of sun, sunlight above. Lots of sun. So. The wind direction change has thrown these guys a curveball a little bit this morning, but uh, those fish just relocate and move around. And with the electronics they have and moving baits like Stetson Blaylock's throwing, uh, they'll run into the right size fish. The big key is being able to put those better fish in the boat. It's hooked up. That one does not feel like a good one. He didn't stop it hard enough, if that makes sense. Man, he's barely hooked too. I don't understand that while they're doing that. I mean, just barely hooked. Just barely hooked. But them, them gommies are getting them good, so. Number five. I think those others are all smaller than him. I'm gonna put him on the big side with that other one. So there's several things that to pay make note of him saying he's barely hooked. Number one, the better they're hooked, the higher percentage you have of landing that mm. fish. But the other thing as an angler, when you see that, you know your, your retrieve's not exactly right, your bait selection, your color, something's not exactly right for those fish just nipping at that bait. So you wanna make a color change, make a bait change, make a, a speed change. We heard Stetson talk earlier about using a, a 7.3 to one gear ratio reel. Uh, there's just a lot of things to do, but when, as an angler, when you see those fish barely hooked, there's a lot of things that are not exactly what you want. Sounds good. Justin Demarion. So you give him an update. So we're out here uh, throwing a crankbait right now. I've been trying to drop on them, but most of them aren't firing. I did catch one. I got in the well there. Not super big. Um, it's definitely gotten tougher. It's a little harder to see them. I think they're tucking in that grass a little bit, so I can't really see them with the pan optics to drop, uh, be more efficient and drop straight on the fish. Um, I have got a couple bites on the crankbait, and uh, one was a muskie, it bit me off. So I'm just sticking with this for a little bit and kind of bouncing between a couple of areas that are pretty close to each other. But it's been kind of a grind this morning, and uh, I mean, I'm going to keep trying different stuff in different areas to try to hone in on what's going on. I still got a few places to go that are fairly close, but uh, my plan is as long as if I can get a limit, like fairly quickly or even even if I don't get a limit I might just go back out to where I've been catching the really getting the good bites I mean they're very infrequent but I mean there's there's big fish out there didn't get one bite this morning out there there's a couple other boats I never saw anyone catch one so I just don't know if they're shutting down or what's going on with them but that's pretty much been our morning so far we still got plenty of time though I mean we're gonna keep grinding and We'll figure something out. Destin Marion, the rookie, started out good, made a cut down in Florida, and has not had a good northern oh, swing. And he is a Great Lakes guy, so you, he's he's looking to turn that around, yeah. especially needs to in this in this third event up north. With he does, and, and very disappointing for him. The first day of practice, the area that he just uh, described there, uh, he's caught 30, 35 bass. He said the biggest five would have been 23 pounds. Well, he's got plenty of time to turn it around on this day. He's going to have to run into some bigger size. A lot of guys in that particular boat, so to speak. 
We've got a lot of coverage on the way here from one of the legendary fisheries of new all leader time. There. New leader, Canadian Corey Tide. Johnston. How about that? Actually, a co-leader with Jay Yellis, Wendland Davis, and Seth Fider. Things getting more interesting by the moment here. We're going to take just a couple of moments for some important messages and rejoin you in a moment. The Yeti Bassmaster Elite at Lake St. Clair is being brought to you live by Carhartt. I'm pro anger Andy Montgomery. I've been making my living with Strike King products for a long time. So when they showed me the new tour grade line, I was all in. I knew I could trust it. What I didn't know was how easy it was to use. With the spooling tool and the prepaid envelope to recycle your old line included in every single box. Not only is it the best line on the market, it gives you the easiest fishing experience possible. Find out more at StrikeKing.com. names yet, but you will. In the wild, nature dictates that when it's time to eat, animals will instinctively find and devour the meal that satisfies them most. In the water, Berkeley Powerbait's scientifically proven formula triggers the natural predatory instinct in bass. Now available in a plethora of shapes, sizes, and colors. Berkeley Powerbait. Fish bite and won't let go. You're watching the Yeti Bassmaster Elite at Lake St. Clair, being brought to you live by Carhartt. Live Bassmaster Elite Series action for you this morning from Lake St. Clair. We've got Bassmaster Live, same thing tomorrow morning, starting at 7 a.m. Eastern Time. A live stream and here on ESPN2 beginning at 8.30 a.m. and 11 a.m. Eastern Time. As we mentioned to you, that comes after our midday break. we got 30 minutes until that happens today, but tomorrow again, a full slate. A full field action, all 85 anglers will be fishing again tomorrow. They get two days to make their case that they can continue on. And we'll see who does that at the end of the day tomorrow. But that's a long ways off. We've got plenty of fishing in the meantime. Stetson Blaylock finished third here at the end of the season, the big postseason, big tournament, AOY championship. Excuse me, second place, I'm sorry, second place. Yeah, Stetson, and I know uh, they're out here. Cranking again this year. Right, it's not quite as good as last year, but he said, I really feel like if I stay with it all day long, can catch five of the right ones. Here we go. Another little one. What in the world? By far the guy who's caught you know the most fish today that we've seen on live. He's been getting bit consistently me. out of our camera coverage. Yeah, and you just hear him right there. It doesn't Small. make any sense. He cannot understand why the size of the fish is really gone down. From he had two 24 pound bags last year. I think he's he was bigger than that. The closest to Seth Fighter, six and a half really pounds back, waste though. I'm trying to call a 14 for a 14. 
Stetson, of course, started this season at the Classic, Lake Gunnersville. That's a big one. Building on momentum from last year. This was his first Classic after many, many years of the competing at the highest level of pro angling. And he made use of the opportunity. He did some really, really wonderful things on Lake Gunnersville. He certainly did, and you could tell that's a Bassmaster Classic how excited he was uh, and had a great showing. Uh, Stetson and Angler is taking his career very seriously, and uh, when he's on that stage, he, he does a good job for us, no doubt. Finished third place at that Classic, and that is a great, great finish. Of course, they say nobody remembers who finished anything but first place. That's not true. A third place finish at the Classic, especially a first Classic, that is a harbinger of good things on the way for this young and yet very experienced angler. Going to be a different experience next year. The Classic goes for the first time to fabulous Fort Worth, Texas and Lake Ray Roberts, a known big bass, big largemouth hideout. Up there just a little bit north and east of Fort Worth. Going to have a field of champions there seeking the world championship. First time in Fort Worth. Great town, great facilities. Going to be a great time for all. And a lot of anglers in that area of the country, no doubt about it, and us having the first classic in that general area. I expect the crowds to be just as big as they were in Birmingham this past year when Hank Cherry lifted that world championship trophy over his head. It'll be a big, big time deep in the heart of Texas here coming up next March, second week of March. For Blaylock, he's had, I mean, you guys mentioned his resume over the last, over his career and whatnot, but the last 16 months, the last 18 months, of bass fishing, he's been the hottest angler other than Scott Canterbury. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously getting second in AOI, third in the Classic. Started out great with the top 10 at the St. John's River. Davey, what, what is that? It's just something just all of a sudden clicks with a guy. They get to a certain age, maturity, knowledge. Well, the, that's a good question, Such, because with Stetson, he had good success. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh -oh. This didn't just come out of, uh, you know, out of nowhere, and it usually doesn't. Um, you, and I I don't mean this to sound wrong, but you don't normally see a guy just start catching him six years into his professional career. You usually see some, you know, some signs of stardom pretty early on. But with Stetson, he had a year or two there where he just, he was disappointed himself. We had him here in studio, and I remember him saying, guys, that wasn't me last year. Yeah. I'm, I'm better than that. And he, he turned it right around. Yeah. And he's, he's very focused, very very committed to, to being one of the best, not just being out here and making a living, but being one of the best anglers in the world. Last did, year, did to make ahead, that Tom. transition over to, to the bass. I mean, that's, you know, you come from Bethlehem. Yeah. It's a different, different, bit and, of a different and thing, He said that he didn't, he didn't treat it any different. He didn't take it any different. It's just, you know, one, one less fish. I didn't know what fish. to do without a dip net. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. One less fish on a tournament and you miss the cut barely instead of moving up. And I mean, last year's second place finish in AOI for him was his third time finishing second in AOY right. in his career. Yeah. Imagine if those become AOY wins instead of yeah. seconds. He is deemed as maybe one of the best anglers still fishing right now. Right. You know, those kinds of things. Different Arkans and making some noise. Harvey Horn's up to third place, another four-pounder. He's been he's in that top 10 17, yeah. all morning long. Yeah, he's, he's caught a four-pounder. He's ready Second to go. Second one of the day, he's got a four and a half. Harvey might be catching largemouth. Could he? I, surely we're going to have somebody that's going to do well today fishing large. I, I just think I Harvey think might so. be one of those guys that would target largemouth. Try to run him down, check in. We'll find out. We'll get that story for you. Harvey Horn, Arkansan now slipping into third place. That's the one we're looking for right there, wow. man. <sighs> That's not one. a four-pounder that they raised. No, no, That's no. a monster smallmouth. Yes, Giant fish for yes, Jamie sir. Hartman, our AOI points leader. Nice Seth sir. Fighter getting a few of the right size in the boat. Contrary to his expectations, he did a little bit better than he thought he would. But the Canadian, Corey Johnston, who had a good tournament here at the end of last year at the AOI Championship, picking up the pace here and putting himself in a tie with Jay Yellis atop that leaderboard. Harvey Horn from Bella Vista, Arkansas. Clark Winlet of Texas, Clint Davis from Alabama. Fighter Holland Krieger, Ito, and Heron rounding out our top ten. We'll take a break. Be right back. The Yeti Bassmaster Elite at Lake St. Clair is being brought to you live by Carhartt.
born in Japan, Sunline has over a 40-year history of making the best fishing lines. With 10% of the company's employees focusing on research and development, Sunline is driven to offer the widest selection of bass fishing lines in the U.S. market. Sunline's fluorocarbon, nylon, and braided lines are made to the strictest Japanese tolerances, incorporating exclusive patented technology like Plasma Rise. Sunline provides the strength to guarantee your confidence. At Mercury, we invested thousands of hours of engineering manpower so you can enjoy hours and hours of untapped horsepower. Introducing the all-new V6 Mercury Pro XS. Light, quick, efficient. Mercury, go boldly. At Mercury, there are no limits to what we'll do to make sure you have no limits either. Introducing the all-new V8 Mercury Pro XS. Light, quick, efficient. Mercury, go boldly. It's been said that a bad day of fishing is better than a good day at work. Getting you to that fishing spot is key. And Bully Dog gets your truck road ready. No matter where, we give you the horsepower and towing torque right when you need it. We make getting there better. Make your ride a Bully Dog. Groundbreaking designs, unsurpassed quality, and unshakable confidence. Welcome to the Ranger Z500 and Z100 series. Leading the industry for over 50 years, these rigs are custom crafted and loaded with more features and advantages to deliver the ultimate ownership experience. The legendary Ranger Z series, unleash next level performance. Mercury, go boldly. You're watching the Yeti Bassmaster Elite at Lake St. Clair, being brought to you live by Carhartt. Bassmaster Live, some beautiful scenes around here at Macomb County, just outside of Detroit. It's our host county here. Take a look at our unofficial leaderboard right now, and before we left you, we noted that Corey Johnston, the Canadian, had tied Jay Yellis to the top spot. Harvey Horn moving up as well. Look at fifth place, though, behind Clark Winlet. Corey Johnston's brother, Chris Johnston, both of them now in the top five. And I don't want to tip the hand, Ronnie Moore, on, on, fantasy, on fantasy talk later, but how many people were picking the Johnston brothers, these two Canadians, to do well here? Quite a, quite a big percentage, 37 and over 50, just based on the buckets that they're in, uh, based on Angler of the Year standings. They had a tough, tough beginning of the year, made up a bunch of points these last three events. Let's go out to one of their notorious running buddies for sure. Seth Fighter hangs out with that Canadian crew sometimes. We talk about it. He yeah, talks about it. One. Out live with Seth. Getting them things in pretty quick. There he is. He'll help. Nice small mouth there. We just saw Joe. Oh, that's a big one. Didn't think he was that big when I first saw him. Stay on. Oh, yeah. Jeez. Freaking waves. Small mouth. Come on, baby. Let me get my hands on you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's a call. That's a call. Nice. Look at that. That's kind of weird. A little crazy hole in this tail. So, Tommy? Yeah? You hear that music? What is oh, that? Yeah, what is yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I know where you're going. So for Seth Fighter to catch quick. like 77 pounds last year, his average fish Damn. five pounders, he was for Seth Fighter, and he's a good friend. I think 
he will agree Jeez. that I have to say. He's a little pessimistic about today, but he's had a great day so far. Looking at there, uh, start out at 7.34 this morning, catching two and three pounders, a four pounder, and I think those are very Damn. conservative estimates. With this big one that he just caught to fill out his limit, He's my nominee for power pole replay today. What do you say, Tommy? Oh, I'm with you on that, man. Oh, man. And, and, and so many eyes on him. I mean, he's uh, yes, sir. maybe the favorite. Yes, sir. Maybe the consensus favorite before okay. things got started this morning. Good call. Put that in as a three and three quarter pounder. Oh, Called up 112, mm. and he's up to 17 four and in the lead. Seth Fighter, you sandbagger, you're our power pole <laughs> replay of the day. <laughs> New leader, Seth Fighter, as we get out to Stetson Blaylock. We've got a little coverage lock up there. And for those unlock itself in a second. There it goes. For those just joining the show, you know, who may not know bass lingo and terminology, sandbagger is probably used in other sports as well, but that's not derogatory terribly towards them. We just like to critique if they underestimate the weights of the right. fish, much bigger than three and three quarters. But when they say that, they give themselves a little bit of mystery that we'll see at the way and then see it, get it, get it when he gets ironed out. Modesty would be a better word, perhaps. <laughs> well, really, the guys it really they is. overestimate, <laughs> though, and kind of fluster the The one guy so. that's been a pro angler in the room here says it is because he knows he was a sandbagger. <laughs> see, oh. a sandbagger can identify see? a sandbagger. <laughs> yeah, a sandbagger knows when they see a sandbag. <laughs> <laughs> and we're keeping these weights on Bass Track, Bass's uh, proprietary app that uh, keeps the weights and culls for us. And Todd Otten just showed showed up on Bass Track with 16 pounds for place. He's right up there then. Quick look, we had a Garrett Pawcat kind of stuck in the two pound average there himself. He's going to have to break out out of that. Let's go back out to Destin DeMarion, though, our Pennsylvania angler. And I believe he's hooked up live. Yes, he is. Wow, look at that drone shot. That is pretty cool. Destin with a little slower start than he would have liked this morning. Had a good practice. He's got a good one on here. Yeah, that's not a bad one, huh? Not in yet. <laughs> That's amazing, the drone shot. You can see that small oh, mouth wants yeah. to be under the boat. Under, yeah. That's the kind we want. That's the kind we want right there. <laughs> Going in the right direction there this morning for Destin. Big ones look much smaller in the small box, so I'm not quite ah, sure how big grind. that one was, but that was a good one. Yes. Guess I'm throwing a crank bait. Stick with a drop shot. And a drop shot. So. I think we gotta stick with a drop shot. Here's yes. an interesting development. Chad Morgan Taylor just uh, popped in with 19 pounds, 10 ounces. Well, that is interesting. Oh, that puts cool him in a, in a two and a half pound lead all of a sudden out of nowhere. Wow. Looking at the map, Morgan Taylor's in a place that he has been on camera uh, no, with us before here. In that St. Clair River portion of Lake St. Clair. Very interesting. We'll probably. Uh, have someone on the case here before too long. Chad Morgan Taylor would like to see what he's up to. Yeah, he tied with Auten at 16 pounds, but he only had four fish, all of them four pounders, and then wow. caught his fifth just moments ago. All right, something to keep in the back of your mind as we get back to Garrett Paquette. He needs to, he needs to put a four pounder or two in the boat. Yeah, that just shows we've been talking about catching those better fish, not necessarily the numbers. Uh, Morgan Taylor with his first five fish lemon and he's at 19 pounds where you know a Stetson Blaylock who has been targeting those bigger fish but just hasn't worked out for him yet this morning you know, five fish weighing what 13 pounds or so it's big big difference there being around the right size fish Chad who had a good tournament on uh, St. Lawrence and Lake Ontario two tournaments ago start of our New York swing A little bonus coverage of That's Drew Benton. I got three two pounders. Big girls are coming. Obviously, he's next to Chad Pipkins, who's <laughs> giving him a bit of news there while he tries to land one. 
hope we can see uh, kind of what size he is. Again, this is bonus coverage, boat to boat. If he's a big one, I think Drew will definitely show it to him. To yeah. Rub it in a little bit, maybe. <laughs> Uh, no, nope. similar to what Pipkins has been catching. Yep, yep. Two and a half pounder, maybe three pounder. Like that, obviously he's gonna. He's got it behind the back. There there we go. And he showed it to there us. Thank go. you, Drew. Drew Benton. They're not far from Chad Pipkin. Chad Pipkin in the boat with him all day long. But Chad Morgan Taylor is the Chad on top right now, and by a good margin ahead of Seth Fighter, Corey Johnston, and Jay Yellis. Chad Morgan Taylor will try to run down his location for you. Maybe get you some bonus coverage of him. We're going to do our very best. We've got a little bit of time left this morning. And we'll be back with the remainder of our morning session after these messages. The Yeti Bassmaster Elite at Lake St. Clair is being brought to you live by Carhartt. What do a taco and a taco truck have in common? Nothing. If you want to play, you need a Tacoma. Your time on the water is precious. You return season after season to make unforgettable memories. Fight a few fish, reconnect with friends, and recenter yourself. If you count on having this time, you need an outboard you can count on to power it. That's why boaters stay with Yamaha for the long run, for life. They know reliability starts here. Pre-collision system, standard, on the 2020 Tacoma, so you can go from one epic playground to the next. If you want to play, you need the Tacoma. The Yeti Bassmaster Elite at Lake St. Clair is brought to you by Abu Garcia, Berkeley, Nitro Boats, and by Ranger Boats. Been an eventful morning, complete with surprises for you today. We have a few minutes left to squeeze out of our morning session here. We will take an hour break starting at 10 Eastern time and then back an hour later at 11 a.m. Eastern time. We will crank it up again. More Bassmaster Live to take you through most of the remainder of the fishing day. As these anglers are pointing toward the weigh-in, trying to get a good start in their four days that they hope four days of fishing. You have to be in the top 40 after two days to continue on. So every cast is important. Everyone counts. And Morgan Taylor on top, and we're going to take you back out on the water live, where we're going to find Derek Hudnall. It's been a while since we've checked in with Derek. Louisiana angler hooked up. Looks like he, uh, he's just inside the mouth of that middle channel. Saint Saw Claire. him inside the river some last year.
trying to get this fish, trying right, to get this fish right up there. Yep. Yeah. Almost there. We want to want to see the size of this one for for Derek. He's a towing that to make up. Towing that Canadian line right there in that in the river. There we go. Yeah, Not bad. Spinning tackle, a little small uh, soft plastic swim bait or jerk bait there. Nice fish. You have to take it. So easy with these big smallmouth. And last year he needed a great finish here to make the classic and he was trying to do a task that's very very difficult we only have nine events in a regular season and he was trying to do it while missing a complete event had an accidental dq we have a month off limits for these lakes and he was pre-fishing over a month before and he accidentally pre-fished one day too long got dq'd from an event made up so many points that he almost made the classic uh, at this event but he needed he needed a win and he did not win this event yeah, having drop on event, that's a that's a good season to be in contention for a classic berth. As a as a rookie too, yeah. it was his first year on the elites last year. Just an honest mistake. See Stetson Blaylock uh, with a spinning rod in his hand. Definitely been disappointed so far this morning with the not the number of bites. I think he's no, got he as many bites as he expected, but the quality of the fish just not what he anticipated. Of course, he did most of his damage cranking last year. It would be hard to put that down if that was your, your story. So you see uh, Drew Benton here uh, from the camera in Chad Pipkin's boat. Chad, uh, high expectations, uh, well deserved. A lot oh, of yeah. experience here, a Bassmaster win here on Lake St. Clair, but just can't get the momentum going this morning. And, and to <laughs> add salt to a wound, you, you have an angler from Florida or South Georgia uh, catching them about every other cast right around you. So you you got to feel positive about being in the area where some fish are, but Chad Pimpkins need to make a little bait change maybe or something. Yeah, Drew's culling out a smaller fish there. <laughs> That's giving Chad some information, but it's not always <laughs> welcome, you know. It's just... You'd like to have this one, wouldn't you, and then release it. <laughs> so. But there were a lot of time to fish. I mean, the expectations were so high coming into Lake St. Clair, and it's certainly not disappointing with almost 20 pounds already this morning. Sure. I mean, just a, oh, yeah. you know, three hours of fishing or so. And it'll get better as the afternoon progresses, I think. These guys with the wind direction changing, uh, Chad Pipkins, uh, Stetson Blaylock in particular, just trying to relocate these fish. They'll move around. Uh, with a wind direction change like this, they can move a half mile and it takes you uh, most of the day to relocate those fish. I think as, as Gerald Swindle told us very early this morning, so they're, they're not, the fish are a little out of sorts. They're not packed, their eating is not organized yet. They're, they're sort of yes. doing sort of random things and traveling in hard to track directions. To be such a big lake, uh, I won't say featureless, but borderline. It's just very few rock piles, very few uh, targets to hold these fish. I mean, I mean they're predators and they like ambush points and a little bit of vegetation scattered here and there and, and some, you know, select rock piles. And other than that, these fish, they, they just roam and feed on bait, feed on gobies, feed on perch and other bait fish. I think it's funny, sometimes here at St. Clair, we've seen a lot of guys catch them real well when they get around other species. A guy said when he caught drum, he realized he was about yeah. to catch a bunch of smallmouth, and that was one of our winners here. Some of those mixed species, when you find that right mix of bait, grass, structure, you'll find all the kinds yeah. of fish. Well, Lake St. Clair, as we've said it multiple times already today, it's changed um, a little bit, sometimes a lot between each and every tournament we've had here, but one thing hasn't changed, it's always good here. They always catch them very, very well, and we expect to see a bunch of guys step up to the plate who did not get to this morning and change that leaderboard around. We're gonna take a one hour break, down for one hour. We'll be back at 11 a.m. Eastern time, and we will see you then.